who drive them will delve deep into their ability to control them. Being able to go straight depends upon you, your skill, and the proximity of your closest pursuer. The order of the day may have something to do with settling an upset stomach or an horrendous headache. And when the time comes to determine who is best, it'll be every man for himself. Take no prisoners. Think only of yourself. Forget about the peaceful moments from days gone by. Let's go racing to see who is king of the mountain. The choice charioteer. The best of the bay. California, the banquet frozen food 300. A beautiful countryside near the rolling hills about 70 miles north of San Francisco. A couple of days ago, they were saying a 90% chance of rain today, but we don't have a cloud in the sky. Absolutely beautiful weather as we get set for racing. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Bob Jenkins, and welcome to Top of the Heap. Don't forget, he won the pole for the road race at Watkins Glen last year. He carries him out off of the racing surface. Ricky going on to win the Winston Cup Series first visit here at Sears Point. Outside of Ricky Rudd. But Ned, when they actually turned seven, they had a problem. Yeah, they did. Rusty ran out of racing room. These are some of the tightest turns that they ever encounter anywhere. And there are 11 of them on this racetrack. And any of those 11 will jump up and get you. Oma, California for the Banquet Frozen Foods 300. The cars are on the track. They'll come around uh, next time and get the green flag. And now let's take a look at the starting lineup for this afternoon's 300-kilometer event here at beautiful Sears Point International Raceway, a two-and-a-half-mile road course. Starting on the pole position will be Ricky Rudd from Chesapeake, Virginia. He drives, of course, the Levi Garrett Chevrolet, qualified at 90.954 miles an hour. That was almost a mile an hour faster than the pole speed last year. Alongside in the front row will be Ernie Irvin in the number four Kodak Film Oldsmobile. He's from nearby Modesto, California. In the second row, it's Dale Earnhardt from Kannapolis, North Carolina, in the number three GM Goodwin Chevrolet. He's flanked by Bill Elliott from Dawsonville, Georgia, in the Coors Ford number nine. In the third row, it is Mark Martin from Batesville, Arkansas, in the Folgers Coffee Ford, car number six. And then Tommy Kendall, one of the guys that Jerry Punch talked about, driving car number 40, the EDS Chevy. In the fourth row, it's Ken Schrader driving car number 25 and Morgan Shepard in number 15. The fifth row, Terry Labonte in number one, and Dale Jarrett in number 21. The sixth row, Rusty Wallace in 27 and Daryl Waltrip in 17. Going to row number seven, number 42, Kyle Petty and 75, Rick Wilson. Davey Allison in number 28 and Hutz Strickland number 12 are making up row number eight. In the ninth row, it's Sterling Marlin in car number 94 and Brett Bodine in 26. The tenth row, Derry Cope in number 10 and Michael Waltrip in 30. The eleventh row, Alan Kowicki in number 7 and Dave Marcus in 71. The twelfth row, Chad Little, car 19, and number 20, Rob Moroso. The thirteenth row, Herschel McGriff in number 04 and Jeff Bodine in number 11. And as we take a look at the rest of the starting lineup, you can see there that Dick Crickle starts in row number 14. And gentlemen, it's going to be interesting to see those two guys move through the traffic because starting that far back really doesn't reflect how well they have performed this weekend. Not really. Jeff Bodine spun coming into turn 11 on his qualifying laps. He was the fastest second round qualifier yesterday, but that puts him in 26th position, and it will be tough for him to come up through the field. I talked to Jeff Bodine earlier. He said, hey, I've driven modifies with no fenders. I had to be careful to keep from running over other tires. I know how to get through this traffic. We're going to find out if he does. A closer look at Sears Point International Raceway. It is 2.52 miles in length. The pole lap time was a minute 39.743 at a speed of 90.954 miles an hour. We'll go 74 laps, and the field separation is 4.2 miles per hour. In cars today, the points leader in Winston Cup, Morgan Shepard. Also, Mark Martin carries one of our in-car cameras and a camera also in the car of our pole sitter, Ricky Rudd, the defending champion of this event. He and the rest of the field now moving off of corner number 11. The pace car will be going straight ahead on the staying on the drag strip while the field moves across the start-finish line to begin the Banquet Bosun Foods 300. Here they come. The green flag is out, and here we go.
This is turn two, Bob. This is where all the problems are going to start. These cars have to get through two abreast, and I don't know if they can make it or not. So far, it looks good. And you can see the tremendous elevation change. They have to come uphill to turn number two. Now they're beginning to go downhill just a little bit, and they really go downhill at this point as they head for turn number four. And there is Tom Kendall in the number 40 car driving to move to the inside and pick up a position from Ken Schrader. The field now moving through the fourth and fifth quarters. They go over a slight incline, and then they come back out onto the drag strip. Here they come off of corner number six. seven and now they move up through the S's for the first time. Turns eight, nine, and ten. Here they are moving off of corner number nine. Now into turn number ten and setting up for the tight turn number eleven where we have seen lots of action in the previous years. Ricky Rudd is the leader. One car off the track slightly kicking up some dust but everything is okay. Now hard braking down into corner number eleven. That's where we have our quick hand position for the afternoon. of 74 laps. Rudd has a beautiful line around this racetrack, Bob. Of course, uh, he's considered to be one of the best, best road racers in NASCAR and has proven that with his wins over the last couple of years, setting a track record here, winning the whole of this race. First three cars have put a little bit of racetrack between themselves and the rest of the field. We go inside Ricky Rudd's car as he leads this race in the second lap. This is exactly what every race car driver wants to see out of the windshield. Nothing except road. <laughs> and not a whole lot of road, Benny. There are a lot of blind spots on this racetrack. As Bob Jenkins mentioned just a moment ago, a lot of uphill and downhill. And as Ned said, blind corners going downhill, turning right, turning left not knowing what's on the other side of the hill. That was turn number seven, and Ricky now moving up through the gears as he goes through the S's once again with Ernie Urban in hot pursuit, but here is the best battle for position. That is Bill Elliott and Mark Martin, with Martin having the advantage at the moment. Both of them very good road, road racers as well. Bill Elliott won his first ever Western Cup race on the road course of Riverside, California. Let's go to get a quick comment from Jerry Punch on Bill Elliott. Jerry? Some anxious moments this morning for the LA crew. They fired the engine in the garage area and found an oil leak. They just changed the engine prior to putting the car on the starting grid. They had some concerns. They also found a brake problem this morning. They were working on Mike Beam and the crew trying to get the brake fixed. So two non-essential items they have a problem with here, motor and brake. Otherwise, everything was okay for the LA team this morning. Right now, Bill Elliott finds himself in fifth position behind Mark Martin and also behind Ricky Rudd, Ernie Irvin, and Dale Earnhardt, the first three. Tell you what, I'm impressed with this run for the lead because, look, Ernie Irvin and Dale Earnhardt both, they're not letting Ricky Rudd get away. Staying right up there with him. There was some concern, as well as Rudd qualified, that he might be able to drive away, but it certainly doesn't look that way. And there, of course, is Rusty Wallace, followed by Kyle Petty. Then comes Terry Labonte, Morgan Shepard, Daryl Waltrip, and the others. Been a pretty clean race so far. We have moved through the... Whoops, just as I say that, we have a car spinning. That's the 19 car of Chad Little that has gotten sideways on the racetrack, trying to get it refired. Looks like he has done so and begin to pull away now. Chad Little, the 19, and the 76 cars also. That's Bill Sedgwick from the Winston West Division as he apparently has stopped someplace on course and maybe out of the race. Yep. Good battle for second position here as Dale Earnhardt is really putting the heat on Ernie Irvin. He may take him here and out break him going into turn 11, or turn 7 rather. Let's see. No, he makes no attempt. You were right first. That is turn 11. Exit turn 11, and Earnhardt getting the car a little bit out of shape. 
Then pull down on the inside, try to get traction off of that turn. He'll break loose with you if you aren't careful. In yesterday's Southwest Tour race, we saw a lot of passing right at the start-finish line as they went into turn number one and two, but that time Dale Earnhardt made no attempt to take the position. So he still runs in third behind Ernie Irvin. Now Ricky Rudd beginning to stretch out the advantage that's a little bit on Irvin. Well, again, a reminder about our 900 service as Herschel McGriff in the number 04 car has stopped on course. That's a tough break for Herschel, who performed so well here yesterday. 900-946-0101 to register for the right guard halfway challenge. It'll cost you 95 cents, but you could win a new car if you know who is leading at the halfway point, and if they call you back, you will win a new car. Again, the number to call to register, 1-900-246-0101, the right guard halfway challenge. We'll be back with more from Sears Point in a moment. In a civilized society, a personal grooming lapse can result in a mortified... Number 44 car driven by Jack Sellers, one of those competitors from the Winston West Division. And so the first full-course yellow comes out. They will get the wrecker onto the racetrack and remove the car. And guys, are we going to see pit stops here in the early going? Oh, no. No one's going to give up that track position this early. No, unless you're at the back of the field. Now, some of the guys back in the back might come in now. But those up front, they don't want to give up that track position, as Ben said. Ricky Rudd leading the other. Let's go down to the pit area and get a report on uh, Jack Sellers. Well, Bob, on the first lap, and then when you're having a bad day, it gets even worse. The jack broke and the car fell off the jack, and Sellers said, hey, what the heck? I'll go out and run it anyways. It's going to blow. It's going to blow. Well, apparently, he didn't make it very far. He did not. The car is against the tire barrier, and uh, that's around turn number nine. So the full course yellow out for the number 44 car driven by Jack Sellers. The Express came into existence? Well, I guess just to move mail from one portion of the country to the other. To keep Dale Earnhardt, Mark Martin, and Bill Elliott. Six through ten, Rusty Wallace, Ken Schrader, Tommy Kendall, Kyle Petty, and Terry Labonte. And then 11 through 15, Morgan Shepard, Daryl Waltrip, Davey Allison, Dale Jarrett, and Rick Wilson. For time to wait before the premiere of Days of Thunder. That's going to be on the 27th of this month. The field is still under caution now. Moving around. He has done a good job of passing. And so has Jeff Bodine, who has moved from 26th to 20th. The green flag comes back out. We're back to racing. Up the hill they come. Through corners number one and two. Kyle Petty on the high side of the racetrack, trying to pick up position on Tommy Kendall. of the hill and now downhill toward turn number six coming back out on the drag strip and Dale Earnhardt is looking for an opportunity to pass Ernie Irvin and go into second spot. Here they come now off of corner number six down the drag strip for just a short period and then working hard for turn number seven. They're really on the brakes right here slowing down negotiating this hairpin corner and now back on the accelerator hard. That's where Benny and Ned were in the early part of our program explaining that that is where Rusty Wallace and Jeff and uh, Ricky Rudd had their little incident with about four laps to go last year that played a part in the outcome of the race. Best battle is for second position as Dale Earnhardt continues to put the heat on Ernie Irvin. Let's see if he tries to outbreak Ernie going into the turn away. That's one place that you can pass, but also you can get in there too hard and really get in trouble. And here it is. Oh, they touch Irvin out of shape for a moment. Earnhardt's going to try to go to the outside. He's not going to be able to take this spot right now, but he might as they come off the corner. Irvin is sideways going to the inside of the track, and Dale Earnhardt has second. Yeah, Ernie was down on the inside of the track, couldn't get traction down there. Earnhardt took advantage of it. Here's car number 34 in the tires. That is Ted Kennedy. Ted Kennedy in car number 34 has crashed. And full course caution is out once again. Here is Ernie Irvin passing Dale Earnhardt back again. And they will race back to the caution. Now Earnhardt's going to try to get the position back, but he'll back off, at least going through corner number four. 
Yeah, they're still racing now. Where did Ernie get all his road racing? I don't know. I think he's doing a great job. This is unbelievable. I, I didn't realize that Ernie was this good of a road racer, but he's not only staying in front of Earnhardt, he's bringing down Ricky Rudd's neck. Because he has a great automobile there, the Morgan McClure Kodak Film Oldsmobile. He's had some very good runs since he started driving this car, but to run this well on the road course, I think it's surprising a lot of people. Now remember, the yellow is out. However, they are racing back to the caution flag. You can see the corner workers displaying the yellow throughout the course, but they are racing back to the start finish line for position. Up through the S's once again, there's turn number nine. Now Urban moves to the inside, looks to the inside at least, and wanted to take over the lead from Ricky Rudd as they come through turn number 10. And again, come down this short straightaway, headed for turn number 11. We may see a change in position. There is Sellers' car, number 34. He's the reason that the uh, caution is out. And here comes the field down once again. This time they will get the caution, and Dale Earnhardt once again down on the rumble strips to the very low side of the racetrack. Let's see who has second position as they come down. Urban is going to hold the spot. Yeah, he had the preferred line that time coming off. Earnhardt headed the last stop. So the yellow now out on turn number nine, and we do have a tire that's rolling near turn number 11. It's out of the uh, group of the racetrack, so it won't present a problem to anyone until it rolls back in the racetrack. They didn't present a problem. Let's see. Is oh, it going to make is it? it going to? Lay down there before you don't get on the oh, racetrack. Stop. Oh, it's going to. It's stopped. Oh, oh, it <laughs> wasn't that nice. <laughs> Let's take a look at the reason for this uh, second full course caution. It involves number 34. Here he is moving off. Turn number 10 just got the car off the racetrack. Yep, got out in the grass, lost his traction, spun it down on the inside against the tire barrier. You can see the tires coming loose. Again, that is Ted Kennedy from Fresno, California, a Winston West competitor. So lots of action here in the first nine laps of the Banquet Frozen Foods 300. Coming in, but that is not the case, at least this time, so Rudd remains in the lead. These guys are terrified of making a pit stop because they know they have to start at the rear of the field. And Ned and I talked about it. Passing is very, very difficult. And when you start 40th, I mean, it, <laughs> you're just dead. Well, this is our second visit to Sears Point International Raceway, our first last year, of course. And the finish of that race was so exciting. Here's our Winston Cup replay. It's this race one year ago. took the lead in corner number two as the cars came up the hill after taking the oh and something may be wrong with Rudd's car but uh, he's created a terrific tra traffic jam that jammed up Earnhardt and Mark Martin and several others yeah I think uh, we had a report that he might have a tire going down and evidently he does have uh, Jerry have you heard any more of that defense well his car had been awfully loose before and they thought he might have a tire going down likewise Mark Martin has the same problem he is ready to this and he thinks he has a tire going down as well so they are ready for Mark Martin and for Ricky Rudd in the pits. Let's check in with John Kernan. Jerry, I'm up here at Dale Earnhardt's for Richard Chilbert just said that Dale has radioed in. He's got a left front tire going down and they're awaiting him to get back around and get him into the pits to uh, get fresh rubber on the car. Well, he has lost uh, second position to Rusty Wallace and look at the traffic jam here coming up through turn number nine. I can't believe every one of these cars has a flat tire. Hmm. They're talking about what, three or four cars having flats? Yep. Evidently, there was some debris on the track. Maybe there were some of those cars that spun out, kicked some gravel out there or something, and they run over it. Let's see how many cars come into the pits then. Here comes Earnhardt. He's definitely headed for pit road. So is Mark Martin. Bill Elliott. I mean, there's the whole, looks like the whole field coming in the pits. And Rudd is really steaming into the pits. Here comes Dale Earnhardt. And John Kernan is there. The school goes to work on the left side of the car. They've got some sheet metal damage. It looks like Dale has made some contact out there on the left side. The tires are changed, and he is away. And let's go to Jerry Punch, who's with Ricky Rudd. Ricky Rudd finally gets the car up pit road. They will change right side tires. They will make an all four tire change. Likewise, they are changing tires on the car number six of Mark Martin. He has some pretty serious sheet metal damage on the left front fender. And Martin's trying to get his car out. It is very here in the pits. Martin just gets by the back of Ricky Rudd's car. Meanwhile, they are putting tires on the left side of the Rudd car. Now, we are told that Rudd came into contact with another car, possibly the Ernie Urban car, which fits the fender in the right rear tire. Thus, he cut the right rear tire. Now, Rudd looks like Eric Chevrolet moves away, but he does have sheet metal damage on the right rear. Now, fellas, I'm sure
year that some fans are wondering, they thought they had a flat tire. Why didn't they come in during that caution? Well, they didn't really have that much to lose. They were going to be at the back of the pack anyway, and why not go ahead and take the green flag and be sure that you have that problem, then come in, you're going to be back there anyway, and wait for another caution, you'll catch up to the field, so it really didn't cost them that much. But they have lost, as you guys talked about in the open, some valuable track position, but at least they don't have flat tires anymore. There's the leader, Ernie Irvin, who has really now pulled out to a nice, comfortable lead. In second position is Rusty Wallace, who has moved up from his 11th starting position. Here comes Irvin off of corner number 11, and there you can see Rusty Wallace also coming off the turn. And then it's pretty far back to the third place car off Kyle Petty. You can see him coming into the picture there now. And that's Tommy Kendall now running in four spot, followed by Mark Martin. Whoops, make no, that Morgan, Morgan Shepard. Yeah, Morgan Shepard, and then comes Davey Allison, Daryl Walker, Dale Jerry. I think that the contact that Ricky Rudd had was with Mark Martin because Martin had some serious damage to the left front fender of his automobile. Ricky Rudd had a lot of damage to the right rear quarter on his car. I would say those are the two cars that made contact. Of course, that would be the downside of staying out there, would be the possibility of, of getting bumped as several of them did. Here's Mark Martin, and here is the pit stop conducted by the Levi Garrett team and the Mark Martin crew. Tight pit area. Look, he moves the tire out of the way to get out of his pit stall. Yes, there's 44 cars pitting on pit road. If they all, and we can see the oh, damage yeah. to the left front of the automobile. There's Terry Labonte right behind him, so evidently Terry had a problem as well. He was running up there in the top ten before all of this started. And now we see Rusty Wallace beginning to close in on Ernie Irvin, who's a leader of the race. Rusty Wallace has won four of the last six road races in Winston Cup competition. And the other two have been run one by Ricky Rudd. They want you to look at that shot, you want to word of the rest of the field go. <laughs> yeah, they're really running away from everybody. Rusty Wallace started 11th at the end of five laps. He was sixth, moves to fifth at the end of 10, and now finds himself in the runner-up spot at the end of 14 laps, and there's the interval between first and second. Let's go to John Kernan, who's with Richard Childress, talking about the tire situation. John? Well, Richard, you cut down a left front tire. Uh, the speculation is, did you know about that during that caution period? No, he didn't know about it because it went off in the corner and he said to call it the set. So, you know, we, we got it off there. It was a left front that was set down. Did he say anything? He's got some damage on the left front fender. Did he say anything about that? Well, he's saying right now, we're, we're talking about it now. He said it still feels pretty good. So Dale Earnhardt, having made a pit stop, Pam. now finds himself at the uh, near the back of the field and has got a lot of traffic to move through. There's Butch Miller just ahead of him. He is farther back than 20th. We just got the 20 lap, 20 car report on the 14th lap, and he's back behind that. And look at all the traffic that he's got to encounter. That number two car is being driven by Jimmy Bowne this weekend, normally driven by Rick Mast. He picks off Butch Miller going through corner number five. And I heard that uh, Jim's brother, Chuck Bowne, won the Bush Grand National Race in at Orange County. Oh, oh spin. boy, BB spins. It's right in front of the field. Ooh, thank goodness he stopped in the corner. Yeah, it looked like for a moment he was going to shoot back out in front of him, but he stayed down on the inside. Looked like he'd be able to continue. Well, yeah, yeah, I think so. Just made a little lap out there in the grass. Pulling back out onto the racetrack. That's a corner number six where Troy Beebe lost it. We'll take a look at it once again. Comes off the corner, just nails the gas, and around the car goes. And as Ned said, it looks like the car was going to back up. They have got to stop. We've, of course, seen him in the Southwest Tour competition in previous years. Troy Beebe in Winston Cup action here this weekend. Well, the interval between first and second certainly hasn't narrowed any. As a matter of fact, Ernie may have put a little bit more distance between himself and second place Rusty Wallace. Well, you got to be impressed with Ernie Irvin, huh? He is doing a great job. Maybe it's the home cooking. You know, he just he grew up not too far from here, started his racing career in the Modesto area. Yep. And second, where's the rest of the field? Well, How long is it gone? There he there is. is. Kyle Petty comes out from the corner. Tommy Kendall, fourth place, doing a great job. 
Running in fifth place there was Morgan Shepard. In sixth is Kenny Schrader, Daryl Walker the seventh, Davey Allison eighth, Dale Jarrett ninth. In tenth place is Sterling Marlin. Now Jeff Bodine has moved from 26th up to 11th. Alan Kowicki is 12th. Brett Bodine is 13th. Michael Walker is 14th. And Rick Wilson 15th. Here comes Dale Jarrett. That's Sterling Marlin. Alan Kowicki trying to pick up a position on Sterling. Kowicki moving his four to the high side of turn number seven. <laughs> now it's a three-car battle. A little contact there between Kowicki and Marlin as they come out of the seventh corner. Road racing in a stock car is absolutely the greatest fun that a stock car driver can have. But it's also the most frustrating thing that he can do because you see Alan Kowicki trying to get by. You can be much faster and not get by that other car. You call that fun? There's, a, there's Brett Bodine right behind Jeff Bodine. So the Bodine brothers are running in 12th and 13th position. Jeff in number 11 and Brett in number 26. There's Jeff who has really moved up from his 26th starting position. He is up to 12th. As Ned mentioned, he had some tough luck during his qualification attempt and spun the car and had to be a second day qualifier was about 10 or 12 feet in the air when this car uh, got off the road course. So apparently he uh, he got airborne a little bit in the car and uh, he, they went to him and tried to get him out of the car and they couldn't get him out of the car for a minute. I don't blame him. I wouldn't get out either. I wanted to wait that thing land before he climbs out of the car. But apparently he is okay and uh, but had a tough day here on the road course. Yeah, he is running back to uh, the pit area. So Rob is okay and a large amount of smoke coming from Richard Petty's car and he's got some tire rub. Well, he yeah. has a broken rear sway bar. Is what's yeah. wrong? Oh, yeah. you see the rear housing going back and forth, and we see it dragging on the ground just underneath the right rear. That's the rear sway bar dragging the ground, which keeps the rear housing located in the center of the car. So there is uh, the STP Pontiac with some serious trouble, and you can win a Pontiac Grand Prix if you know who is leading at the halfway point of this event and. The people at the Right Guard Halfway Challenge call you back. Now, here's how you register. All you have to do is get the telephone and dial a certain number while we watch Ernie Urban make a pit stop. So the leader has come in for a pit stop. Dial 1-900-246-0101. It'll cost you 95 cents to register. But again, if they call you back and you know who's leading at the halfway point, you will win a Pontiac Grand Prix. Ernie Urban moves back out onto the racetrack after having a successful pit stop. Rusty Wallace, it appeared, also made a stop, as did Kyle Petty. So the first three chose to come in and make a pit stop here on lap number... Oh, and the King spun the car. Well, the left rear tire has been flat the whole time. I guess when the Panhard bar broke, the left rear went across, hit the quarter, finally cut that tire. It's been flat the whole time, and evidently the whole rear housing is just become disconnected because he could not get back. Both rear tires are flat now. We can see the car just sitting on the ground. Richard motioned for the record to come pick this thing up and get it back to the garage. Yeah, you can see him trying to spin the wheel and it won't go. You know, we talked about track position earlier in the show, and here's a guy who has great track position. That is Mike Chase from Bakersfield, California. He didn't come in for a pit stop. He's going to lead this race. Sure is. There's Butch Miller, Harry Gint. Now, Harry Gint did make a pit stop. And so did Dale Earnhardt and Bill Elliott. We wondered, and Mark Martin, those that had made pit stops earlier, if they would come in. Yes, they did. They came in, and I'm sure they took on four tires like everybody else did. Well, I mean, Harry Gant made a pit stop, not this caution flag, but the one before. So he has made a pit stop, and he's in third spot. Now, yeah. Earnhardt, those other cars, did make a pit stop, this caution flag. And there is the king who has taken down the netting on the window and trying to get some assistance to that car that might enable him to uh, at least get back to the pit area. We'll take a look at what happened to King Richard Petty. Well, you can see that right rear wheel coming out as the rear sway bar has broken the left rear tire is flat and then around he goes when the right rear finally blew around he went he had no both tires in the rear was flat 
Now he is on the hook, and they are headed for the garage area, or at least the pit area. So King Richard Petty. Remember last year, he had an incident with Dick Johnson down in turn number 11 that uh, knocked him out of the race. So King Richard Petty has seen better days than those he has had at Sears Point International Raceway. Deal coming now down near turn number 11. It will be at least one more lap before we uh, get the yellow. We're keeping an eye out to see if anyone else chooses to come into the pit area. There is the entrance. Those yellow barrels indicate the entrance to the pit area. A couple of cars coming in, but not very many. We'll be back with more from the beautiful country near Sonoma, California in a moment. Here in just a few moments, there is Mark Martin. Let's go down to Jerry Punch, who's with Steve Meal. Let's get an update from Steve. Steve, what's the situation on the car? How bad does it hurt? Well, it's towed out about probably an inch, you know, and the throttle seems to be sticking a little bit. Evidently, when they hit up there, it might have knocked the motor sideways a little bit and got the le linkage kind of messed around, but it's not hanging where it's going to hurt anything. It's just a little bit hard to downshift with it. The car ran real well with that other set of tires on it. We were catching her in Irvin about a second a lap. I, you know, the traffic is real bad, but the car is not hurt bad enough that Mark can't overcome it. Right now, Mark's just going to have to carry it. What did Mark say happened up there? He said he saw Ricky have a flat, and then the three had a flat, and then he had a flat, and they all kind of crashed having their flat. So I don't know what happened. It looked like a caution. So many cars pitted at one time there that some of these guys got left out. But those of us that came in are in good shape again now because we're, we're, we've had a caution. We get back up in there. We're just not as near to the front as we need to be. Well, watch for Mark Martin to make his charge, Bob. He's currently in 27th position. Now let's take a look at our big A auto parts pit stop performance on Rusty Wallace took the driver 21.2 seconds to enter and exit the pits. It took the crew 23.1 seconds to do their job for a total of 44.3 seconds. And he pitted on lap number 19, came in second, and is currently shown in fifth position as the field comes off of corner number 11, looking for a green flag and the restart of the Banquet Frozen Foods 300. The leader once again is number 23, Mike Chase. Rusty Wallace is running fifth, but the four cars in front of him did not make the pit stop. That's why he's back in fifth. And look who's right behind Rusty Wallace. It's Ernie Irvin, who was the leader before we had that caution period and the series of pit stops. So watch Wallace in 27 and Ernie Irvin in number four move up through the traffic. Passing Harry Gant in turn number three. Oh, there's a... The number 09 car getting out of shape just a little bit. That's Terry Fisher as Kyle Petty went around him. Kyle already had to squeeze himself in a hole there, but he did it. A lot of these guys you may not be all that familiar with if you were a regular Winston Cup viewer, and that's because we have a lot of Winston West competitors in this event. Ten of them, as a matter of fact. Ernie Irvin's big A out of hearts pit stop performance. 21.3 on the driver and 25 and a half on the crew for a total of 46.8, just a little bit uh, slower than Rusty Wallace's. And he uh, dropped five positions, came in in the lead and went out in six spot. And now Rusty Wallace trying to pass Butch Miller, who's running in second position, and Mike Chase, who is the leader of the event. Now Mike Chase is no slouch on a road course. He's one of the biggest winners in the Southwest Tour competition. And has uh, quite a bit of experience on this racetrack. And There's Kyle Petty, who's running right behind Ernie Irvin. Looks yeah. like Kyle's trying to get inside Ernie. He's trying to outbreak him. Let's see. Oh, Butch Miller is sideways. He saves it. The three abreast. No, let me. Kyle makes a pass. And wow. Kyle Petty does pick up a spot. Kyle moves to third place. And Morgan Shepard got through. So there's Morgan at number 15 as he tries to pass Butch Miller in turn number two. Our current Winston Cup points leader, Morgan Shepard, in car number 15, looking very good here on the road course. Morgan is good road racer. You know, he won the pole last year at Watkins Glen. Yep. And Ernie Irvin is behind Butch Miller, was not able to get by. He's trying desperately, but not able to make a pass so far. There he is. He's on the inside of Butch and takes a spot away. What was it Butch Miller said about taking the driving school out here, Benny? Oh, he said his, his instructor, Bill Cooper, showed him the perfect line around the Sears Point Raceway. He said, I found it twice when I crossed it. <laughs> <laughs> 
looking back on Ernie Irvin and the others now. Of course, Butch Miller, uh, his sponsor is Banquet Frozen Food. They're the sponsor of the race. Here's Wallace trying to take the lead. And he will do so in turn number seven. And now Kyle Petty looking for second position, running side by side with Mike Chase as they head out of the corner and through the S's once again. But Mike Chase was able to hold on to the challenge of Kyle Petty and maintain second position. We'll see how things shake out as they go up through the S's. I think we'll probably see Kyle make the next attempt to take over this spot as they outbreak each other for turn number 11. Here they are moving through turn number 10. Now down this short straightaway, Kyle moving to the inside. Let's see if he makes an attempt, and yes, he will. And I believe it's going to be a successful attempt as he cuts the uh, rumble strips, goes into second, and now Morgan Shepard is right there knocking on Mike Chase's door. Winston Cup champion coming into this event, fourth in points, 159 behind the leader, Morgan Shepard, is the leader of the race, and now Morgan Shepard will pass Mike Chase, and Ernie Irvin tries to, but can't get the job done. <laughs> Ernie just can't hot get in the holes that these other fellows are making. He's trying, but he can't get the nose in there. This is fun, you know, I, I like this road racing. This is this is good stuff. There's Irvin now moving inside and taking the position away from Chase. And we say uphill and downhill. See how Ernie went out of the shot when Morgan Shepard went down. That's how much uphill and downhill there is. And there, as you said, Benny, is Jeff Bodine, who has just had a tremendous race. He started again in 26th position after a spin on his first qualifying attempt. He was a second-day qualifier, and look at Jeff Bodine move up through the traffic. And there's Tom Kendall in the 40 car trying to get by. Oh, he and Chase almost get together. Ken Schrader, Daryl Walter, Sterling Marlin. And where is Dale Earnhardt? Remember, he's had a tough race so far. There he is. He's running with the Sterling Marlin and now Chase. Well, he has come up through the field pretty good, having made a green flag pit stop and also stopped during this last caution. I think he only took on two tires during this last caution because he had just taken on two during his green flag pit stop. Now he's going to try to out, out break Chase going in the corner. He does it. Now the whole line should follow. There goes Sterling Marlin, Alan Kowicki. Ricky Rudd will try to get by. Here comes Rudd. And the pole sitter, another one of those who made a green flag pit stop. And here is the footwork. Now watch this. Using that left foot on the brake. You can see how much he's turning the steering wheel. Oh, that's a great shot. Is that fantastic? That is something. Now you'll you'll know when he comes to the tight corners because he'll really climb on the brakes. There's one of them. A little bit of heel and toe, giving us some gas in between the shifts to keep the engine RPM the same as the rear wheel. You can see the quick shifts that he makes. Talk about speed shifting. Yeah, he, but he's using the clutch to upshift. Most of the guys do not use a clutch. That's with the Jericho transmissions. They can do it without using a clutch. Just gently tapping the brakes there occasionally. And we can see the, the steering wheel going around. Yep. Right behind the brake pedal. That, there, there's another tight turn. Notice him. He pumps the brakes, Benny. That's right, because he needs to get the brake pedal up to full to top of the pedal to do the heel and toe the way he wants to do it. Now, folks, if you don't think these race drivers are busy, here's the spin. Brett Bodine on course. Or, yes, that is Brett Bodine. And here's another car off the course. Rick Wilson, it looks like. I believe it is. Yep, Rick Wilson spins around, keeps it going, loses many positions, but he's okay. There is no caution at the start-finish line, so apparently both of those drivers will get going again. Ricky Rudd now running just ahead of Davey Allison. 25 laps have been completed. Here's a replay of the spin by, oh, Jeff. Brett Bodine got way off course there in corner number seven. Wow, look at the cars take the evasive action. There we see Rick Wilson getting the dirt. Michael Walter, Rick was not able to save it out the dirt, spun around. And Rick Wilson got his car headed in the right direction and took off. Rusty Wallace is the leader of this road race here at Sears Point International Raceway near Sonoma, California. What an afternoon of racing we have for you.
there's Kyle Petty running in second position. We're glad you could join us on this Sunday afternoon. We'll have more in a moment. Presenting. Jerry Clark, what's the problem down there? Apparently brakes, or I should say absence of brakes, was the problem for Brett Bodine. He took the car up in turn seven and had no brake pedal at all and looped the car to keep him going completely airborne off the course. They are working now, the Quaker State crew working on this Buick, trying to get this car back. They have changed tires and tried to repair the brake line and will keep working here on the, in the pits, but a tough break for Brett Bodine. Let's go up pit road where Gary Nelson is standing by with our John Kernan. John? Well, Gary Kyle's running really well right now. Have you told him to take it easy and just ride around? Well, no, our strategy is the same as it's been all year. Run flat out, do the best we can. That way we know exactly where our equipment falls and if we need to work on it. So we're in second right now. We've got to get just a little bit better because we really would like to be up front. What more do you have to, to work on to get it better? I think we can adjust the chassis just a little bit. It's really close on the right-hand turns, but it's a little tight on the left-hand turn. So we're afraid if we adjust too much, then we'll hurt both ways. But, you know, that's the kind of stuff we're going to work with here earlier in the race and see how we are at the finish. But right now, I would say Gary Nelson and crew are satisfied to be holding down that second spot. Well, you know, that was a strategy that Gary told us that they were going to employ all season long while he was winning the Rockingham race. Just go flat out every race save anything to see what the car can do and obviously it is doing very well today because he is in second position third place belongs to ernie urban now the 43 car richard petty is not on the lead lap and the 57 car of jimmy spencer is off the course Ooh, ooh, and wow. just ahead of the leader yeah I tell you, that has to be some anxious moments for Spencer when he backed across the racetrack in a blind downhill. Yeah. Rusty, fortunately, saw him quick enough to make uh, an evasive move. Here comes Rusty off of corner number six, being pursued by Kyle Petty. Talk about the road racers. Where did Kyle Petty come from in the road racing? He's not known as a road racer, but today he's doing a fantastic job. Yes, he is. Of course, he has a good car, and that makes a world of difference if you got a car that'll get around here. Of course, you got to drive it, too, but it's a combination of both, I guess. And I think Rusty's running away from him, do you? No, he sure isn't. We haven't seen Felix Sabatos around his owner. I guess he's in Charlotte watch this today. Leaders Rusty Wallace. And second is Kyle Petty. And Kyle's coming. Yeah, he is. He's closing in, I believe. The 57 car of Jimmy Spencer, after he got started again, is uh, held right there with Kyle. He sure is. Look, he's closed up on Kyle Petty in the corner. He must have just made a pit stop, because I see some fuel coming out the vent on that Heinz 57 Pontiac. In nine more laps will be the halfway point. We're on lap number 28. The halfway point is 37. And again... Halfway challenge money is available today. Ten thousand dollars to the driver who is leading at that point. Let's take a look and see what happened to Jimmy Spencer. Wow, what in the world did happen? Ooh, forgot to turn. Looked to me like man, I don't know what to happen. But anyway, he nosed her into the tire wall, but then drove out of it, and it certainly didn't affect the running of the car any. Urban, the car that's running in third spot, Morgan Shepard running fourth. Ernie now Urban has been one of our four leaders this afternoon. Ricky Rudd led from the pole. There is Morgan Shepard, the Weston Cup point leader. You know, I tried to talk to Morgan the other day about the points. He won't talk about it. <laughs> look at the look at the shifter knob. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> vibrating there. It's a little higher. It looks like a little higher. It looks like it's up in the roof somewhere. <laughs> We we'll watch him go through the gears as he traverses the course. There's Tommy Kendall. Making a move on Morgan, taking over the fourth place. Yep. Tommy Kendall moves to fourth now in car number 40. And look who's right behind them. Dale Earnhardt, Gidrin Chevrolet, running in sixth position. We'll watch Morgan Shepard. Now watch, he's going to downshift here going into turn number 11. Now we're watching for him to... Here, here we go from uh, corner number 10 to 11. Now, there he downshifts. And he'll go to second gear in just a second. Come on, Mark. There you go. Down to second. <laughs> Accelerate. All turn 11. Now, third gear. Wow, what a gear shift. Fourth gear. Head her up the hill. 
and this is uphill. It's probably a five or six degree grade up the hill. Third gear. Second gear. And look at Dale Earnhardt. He is right on Morgan Shepard's bumper. This is the battle for fifth position. Morgan has fifth at the moment, and Earnhardt is right behind him. and the inside changes so fast. <laughs> yeah, it can be the inside on one turn, the outside on the next one. Through corner number six, back out onto the drag strip, and we have another yellow out. Full course yellow, our fourth of the day. These guys are going to be racing to the caution flag. They're in turn seven. Morgan Shepard getting way high in the seventh turn and losing the position to Dale Earnhardt. I think that Earnhardt outbreaked him going into the corner. Yeah, and I think Morgan saw that, and, and he didn't want to take any chances. He knew Earnhardt was running a little bit faster, so he just moved a little wide and let him go. Beal coming down now, running to the yellow. You see the air hose right by the steering wheel. That's to cool off Morgan Shepard. That goes over the right window, and he picks up air off the race course and blows on his face to cool him off. Here comes Rusty Wallace down off of the 11th turn, and he will take the yellow flag on lap number 30. Our fourth full course caution of the afternoon. Seven laps from the halfway point. Now the question is, the question of the day is who will pit and who won't pit for that track position once again. Well, I don't don't think that Rusty Wallace can afford to because there's $10,000 up for grabs here pretty shortly. That's right, and you can win a Pontiac Grand Prix. Right now, dial 1-900-246-0101. The call will cost you 95 cents, but if you're called back by the Right Yard Halfway Challenge people and you know who's leading at the halfway point, you'll win a Pontiac Grand Prix. Today's luxury automobiles. The more things change, the more they look alike. Until you look at Cadillac, where classic style and design remain uncompromised. Where true luxury makes Cadillac the top-ranked domestic... For the Banquet Frozen Foods 300 Winston Cup race. We'll complete 32 laps here in just a moment and be five away from the halfway challenge. And the leader of the race at the moment is Tom Kendall in car number 40, followed by Mark Martin. Herb Hare in car number zero runs in third position. And here is Kyle Petty, and his Big A Auto Parts pit stop performance shows it took him 21.6 seconds to slow down and speed up in and out of the pit area. And it took the crew 55, or rather 25.4 for a total of 47 seconds. He came in to the pit area in second position, and when he left the pits, he was 14th. And that is the example of track position. Yeah, it sure is. There's a lot of cars that stayed out. Yeah. And i tell you what, there's Mark Martin. He's another car that stayed out. Let's go to Jerry Punch, who's in Mark's pit. Well, Mark opted not to pit at all this time. Let's find out why from Robin Pemberton, the crew chief. Robin, you didn't come in. Why? Well, right now, track, everybody's going to have to stop one more time. In fact, this means so much. 
much here. We know our tires will be run off a little bit. You know, we might lose up to eight or ten positions here in the next in the next little bit because everybody's new tires. But right now, track position, and like I said, everybody's going to fit one more time. A bit of strategy here early. Let's go up with John Kern and standing by with Tony Yuri. Well, Tony, you didn't pit there. Why not? Well, we only had 10 laps on tires. We put on four tires at the last stop, and it's only like six or seven laps of a $10,000 lap, so we're going to see if we can hold them off and get that 10 grand. <laughs> well, you see it, the bucks are the <laughs> factor down here in the pits. Got to get that 10 grand for leading at the halfway point. He's, of course, the crew chief on Tom Kendall's car, the EDS Chevy. Now, again, a reminder about the 900 number. You can call to register to win that Pontiac Grand Prix. Courtesy of the Right Guard Halfway Challenge. And the driver who leads at the halfway point and gets $10,000, the number to call is 1-900-246-0101. 95 cents per call, but if you are called back and you know who's leading at the halfway point, you win a Pontiac Grand Prix. Not yeah, bad. So, no, it's not bad at all. Now, fellas, uh, normally you have to run five laps under green flag racing. Do you do that here on the road course? Well, we'll find that out and answer it for you in just a moment when we come back with more live action from Sears Point International. Peter is Tom Kendall in car number 40. They're trying to put number 57, Jimmy Spencer, a full lap down. And Rusty Wallace begins to move up. He's already in fourth position. Mark Martin is in second. Third is Irv Hare. And then comes Rusty Wallace in number 27, followed by Terry Labonte. Now, Bob, I posed the question about the halfway mark. Would they pay it then, or do they have to run five laps under green? The fact is, if they continue green until the halfway, they will be paid on the 37th lap. Lots of passing going on here in the seventh turn. There's Rusty Wallace moving inside and picking up a position. Dale Earnhardt, and oh, we have contact between two cars. Looks like Troy Beebe, maybe a number 93, had contact with Jimmy Spencer. Dale Earnhardt right behind. There's Ernie Irvin and Daryl Waltrip. Spencer goes high as Earnhardt goes under. Here comes Ernie Irvin and Daryl Waltrip. Jeff O'Dan was not able to get by Spencer. He and Kyle Petty have to kind of sit back and wait now. Jeff O'Dan goes by. Kyle Petty follows him. Headed for turn 11. Here comes the leader, Tom Kendall, car number 40. Rusty Wallace in third with Mark Martin between first and second. And Rusty with four new tires on his Miller Pontiac. This completes lap number 34. Three more laps to the halfway point. And Rusty Wallace sees dollar signs in his eyes. He wants that 10 grand for leading at the halfway point, and he's got less than three laps to do it. He may have second here from Mark Martin. Yes. Ooh. Boy, it looked like he was about to get loose for a moment, but... He just drove her hard into that turn. Now we'll see if Rusty Wallace can catch Tom Kendall. You remember Tom Kendall led at Watkins Glen, so he, as you have pointed out uh, previously in the show, uh, is no slouch to road racing. He is a very good road racer. Uh oh, Jeff Bodine. Mark Martin, the left front tire looks like it, it is hitting the fender and makes some pretty good contact with that fender. Hmm. Now Rusty. Closes in on Tom Kendall. Let's, Let's see, see if there's it here. This is where he tried on the outside on on the uh, Ricky Rudd last year, but this time he's going to try it on the inside. He? Couldn't do it. Tom Kendall holds him up. Now we'll watch him when he enters turn 11, and they see if he tries out breaking going into that turn. We watch from Morgan Shepard's car. Just ahead of him is Kyle Petty. Tom Kendall still in front. Here comes Rusty. Let's see if he's going to try to outbreak him. I know he is. Yep, does he go to turn number 11? Let's see who wins the battle. Kendall doesn't want to relinquish the lead, but he does. To well, wait a minute. He's coming back. He's coming back. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was a good move, but it just didn't quite work. Those new tires on Rusty Star, I think, definitely worked to his advantage. Two laps to go. Two laps to go to the halfway point. We've completed 35 laps. Ernie Irvin is in the pit. There's Jerry Punch with a report. Apparently a front tire for the Kodak Oldsmobile. Ernie Irvin brings the car down pit road, showing a lot of pitch sheet metal on the doors of the car. So, and they are 
trying to pull some of the sheet metal away here from the right rear of the car, changing right side tires, and then they apparently have a left rear tire going down, so they will come around and change the left side tires as well. A tough break for Ernie Irvin. Now, the good thing about being on a road course is you won't lose a lap, but you will lose a lot of time here as they change all four tires here on the Modesto California driver's car. He is out of the way. But he has lost valuable track position, Ernie Irvin. We have a crash in turn number four. That is the number 12 car of Hunt Strickland. Their best is Buick. He's trying. Oh, he's right in the back out there. Oh, they get out of the way. <laughs> well, they did. Evidently, he saw that there was no traffic coming there for a little bit, so he backed out. Got her back on foot. That's Bobby Allison's car, and it's being driven by Hunt Strickland, and we'll take a look at it and see what happened. Yeah, he may have had a little bit of help from yeah. the 09 car of Terry Fisher. Yeah, I think he did. He spins her around and has to wait for those cars to go by, and then he finds an opening, and no cautions. Rusty Wallace now beginning to pull away from Tom Kendall and Mark Martin, and next time around will be the halfway point, and $10,000 to the leader of the race. Irv Hare doing a doggone pretty good job running in fourth spot in that Skull Oldsmobile, but he's on the back bumper off. Mark Martin, there's Terry Labonte, and then comes Dale Earnhardt. Well, of course, Irv Hare is also no stranger to road racing as he has competed many, many times in full-bodied stock car competition on road courses in Trans Am. And, uh, and we do have a full course caution, but the leader did not take it. Harry Gann apparently was off course causing this full course caution, but the leaders are going to have to race all the way around and pick up the yellow. And now that would be on the halfway mark. Right? Yeah. But we'll have to check that out and see since they are racing back to the flag, well, it, it might be paid anyway. So we'll have to check that out. All kinds of things coming <laughs> into the picture here. We are checking because we don't want to give out any false information because it could mean the difference between winning and not winning a Pontiac Grand Prix for somebody. $10,000 for yeah, Rusty Wallace. For the driver, right. Moving through turn number seven once again. This is the money lap coming up, but the question is, will it be considered the payoff lap since it will be under caution? Yeah, now the leader will only get the caution when he comes to the start-finish line, so as far as he's concerned, it's still green for a person. And Rusty Wallace is headed up through corner number nine, and now ten. at the end of this lap so there is the answer to your question if you are called back by the right guard and halfway challenge people the name to remember is rusty wallace here comes the halfway point of the race there it is and rusty wallace is the leader and picks up ten thousand dollars and again if the right guard people call you back and ask you who was leading at the halfway point say rusty wallace here's dale earnhardt getting into the pit area. Here's John Curtin with a report. Well, the Goodrich crew was not prepared for this. Dale, in fact, misses his pit. He pulls it back behind the wall, and he has shut the motor down. The Goodrich crew is going to work. They're lifting the hood. And looking under the car right now, I'm not sure if they know exactly what the problem is, but the motor is not running. Does Dale told you what the problem is? Transmission. Well, there you have it. Uh, in for a day of what they hoped would uh, wind up in victory lane, but for the third week in a row, some bad luck for Dale Earnhardt. Well, nothing need more be said than transmission. Yeah. I knew that something had to be wrong more than just a normal pit stop because the pit uh, lane was not open at that yep. time. We see Earnhardt already taking the shifter out so they can change the transmission and get him back on the racetrack. They're handing him wrenches to take the shifter off so they can... There he takes the harness on loose so we can go to work on the car. Just like last week when Dale Earnhardt assisted in the, the uh, insertion of a new camshaft, he this week is going to take Rich in hand and try to help repair the transmission that has put him behind pit wall at the halfway mark of the Banquet Frozen Foods 300. in the top five was running fourth has come in for a pit stop now he was off sequence with the other front runners in the skull osmobile 
Yeah, several cars there. in the pit. Yeah, yeah. there are a number of them in there. Hutch Strickland, Harry Kent. Here comes Troy Beebe's car out. Or is that Stan Barrett? That's BB. Yeah. Darrell Waltrip also came into the pits. We don't see him in the picture, but he was one of the drivers that came into the pits. Right. Right. Butch Miller leaving the pits. Then there goes Darrell Waltrip out of the pits. Here comes Hutt and Harry Gant. Kind of surprising that they would pit now and then because they have to make another pit stop before the end of the race. Yeah, I don't think they can go the rest of the way, although you know, Darrell Waltrip gets all the good gas mileage, but that would be stretching pretty far. Most of them were saying that they could go about 28 to 30 laps yeah. without yeah. making a pit stop as far as fuel is concerned. Now Mark Martin didn't stop the last time. Now he chooses not to stop again this time. Well, I think that he figures he can't go the rest of the way from here and so stay out there and ride a while and wait for the next opportunity. So gives the drivers an opportunity to relax just a little bit and catch their breath while we are under caution gives us an opportunity to take another commercial break back in a moment there's shepherd and kyle petty and sterling marlin let's replay this and see what uh, happened what we see jeff bodine trying to get inside of terry labonte kyle petty trying to get inside him oh Three abreast. Yeah, he got down the ripples, uh, yeah, ripple think, bumps there. I think he may have even run over some tires. Yeah, not had tires. Yeah. There just was not room for three cars down there. It's tough for two to get through there. Some of those guys would argue this awful tough for one. <laughs> There's <laughs> Derek Cope, who had a heck of a time yesterday afternoon in the final practice session. He got over on his roof. But they, he's racing the same car. Didn't hurt it that much. Here comes Ricky Rudd picking up another position, out breaking Tommy Kendall in car number 40. So that puts Rudd in third position. Rudd is definitely headed toward the front of the field once again after making a green flag pit stop, losing a lot of track position, but finally battling himself back up to the front. He has some damage on the right side of that Chevrolet. You can see it there on the right rear quarter panel. I think about every car out there has been in contact with somebody. It's worse than Martinsville, Virginia, I believe. <laughs> That's right. It's worse than a short track race. Coming up on the 41st lap of competition, 74 to make up this race as we are inside Rudd's car as he pursues Mark Martin and the leader of the race, Rusty Wallace, through turn number one right here. Kyle Petty, as I said a moment ago, had some contact. John Kern is in the pits with Kyle. The crew goes to work on the left side, pulling out the sheet metal. They told Kyle on the radio that they would not change the tires unless they looked like they were going down. Kyle had radioed in and thought he had a tire coming going down. But basically what it was, he was just rubbing too much with the sheet metal. And now they finally got it away. And Kyle, asking Gary a question, gets a response and takes off. What they were doing was taking a jack handle and trying to roll the fender away from the tire. That was the problem. The fender was hitting the tire and probably, oh, there's Dick Trickle off the course, but that was probably, Kyle could not steer the car with the car with the tire hitting the fender. We could be looking at another full course caution here because Trickle, it appears, is unable to go. And if that's the case, they're going to have to get a wrecker to assist him off of the track. You see a corner worker there talking to Dick. And the corner worker tells, now the car wants to move a little bit, it looks like. It looked like the corner worker told his contact that he could not move the car. We're looking down to the start-finish line, keeping an eye on whether or not the yellow will come out. Nothing to indicate such right now. Needs to push, he said. And there it is, full course caution. Full course caution. Sixth of the afternoon. Let's see if we can find out what happened to Dick. Well, there he is, pull, pulling over to the left side of the track, the right side of her screen, just pulls out of the way of all the other traffic and pulls over there and stops. Hmm. Didn't so have, apparently something's wrong. Yeah, the car. didn't yeah. have contact with anything or anybody, but uh, just pulled the car to a stop in turn number two. So on the 42nd lap, the yellow once again is out. The leaders have taken the caution as they come by our position here, located just to the left of the start-finish line. We'll have more right after these messages. This includes 300-kilometer Winston Cup race from Sears Point International Raceway, located about 70 miles north of San Francisco. 
Our Speed World coverage is being brought to you by Banquet Frozen Foods. Good food that's right on the money. By the Kodak Color Watch System. Look for the Color Watch System seal for great film developing. And by the Robert Bosch Corporation, makers of Bosch Platinum, the ultimate spark plug. Always nice to come out to this area, not only to see the countryside, but there are some tremendous race fans in this area. Oh, unbelievable race fans in this part of the country. Rusty Wallace is the leader of the race, and the question now becomes, are they within this window that if we make one more stop, they could go the rest of the way? Well, I really don't know. Uh, how many laps have been completed no, I don't so think far? They, I don't think they can go the rest of the way now. I th think there's about 31 or 32 laps to go, and that would put it awfully close for them. Yeah. Some of them may try it. Well, they might do it. Well, let's find out what they're talking about in Rusty's pit. Here's Jerry. I was eavesdropping a minute ago in a conversation between Harold Elliott, and Barry Dodson, and Jimmy Maycar and the crew, and they just don't feel they can give this race up right now. They feel they need to leave Rusty out there as, well, as strong as the car is. They know that other cars are going to pit, but they figure they're going to get at least one more yellow flag. They don't think they can make it the rest of the way on one fuel stop here, so Mark Martin will be making his way to pit road. Likewise, we expect to see Ricky Rudd and some of the other guys, but we expect to see Rusty stay on the racetrack. They're going to try to make it a few more laps and maybe get one more yellow flag. But right now, it's pit stop here for Mark Martin as they will go to work on the right side of the Folgers car. The four now getting it will get all four tires. That's Mark's crew coming to work on that car. And they're also working down in, John, in the Tommy Kendall pit where John Kernan is. Jerry, they've already got the right side tires on. The jack goes under and the left side comes up. The left side tires going on. We're going to see a four tire change. Jerry, what's going on down on, on your end? They're trying to get left side tires. They finally get the tires for the Mark Martin car. He is down on the way. Neil Jared is moved by Rick Wilson. And Tommy Kittle now making his way down pit road. They're also on one of those gold cars to my right here. That would be the car number one of Terry Levani. And possibly they might be able to make it. Have to go about 30 laps, 31 laps to the final uh, final checkered flag. But again, Rusty Wallace and the crew discussed it just a moment ago, and they felt like they're going to roll the dice and stay out for the night and the race away. For those of you just joining us, Dale Earnhardt is behind pit wall repairing a transmission on the car. The leader of the race is Rusty Wallace. And now running in second position is the pole sitter, Ricky Rudd. We'll have more right after this. Stay with us. Under caution for the sixth time this afternoon. This caution caused by Dick Trickle stopping on course. However, we will be going back to green flag conditions in just a moment. Now, Benny, we speculated on whether they could go the rest of the way from here. You yes. have some information on Mark Martin there. Mark Martin start, stopped on lap 12. It's now lap 43, so he made 31 laps. That's 31 laps to the end of the race. But 30 left in the race from here, so yes, he can make the rest of the way. And maybe some of these other drivers that made pit stops to, on this caution as well. Fellas, we have 31 cars on the lead lap as the green flag falls. 31 cars are on the lead lap, and the record for a number of cars on the lead lap at the finish of an event was 22 at Watkins Glen in 88. Second place battle, Jeff Bodine taking it away from Ricky Rudd. Jeff Bodine goes to second. What a move! What a move that Bodine made on Rudd. But Rudd's car is not. It, Rudd's going yes. backwards. There goes Morgan Shepard by him. Sterling Marlin trying to go by him. Rudd has a problem. Here comes Alan Kowicki up also. Ernie Irvin is right there. Ricky Rudd off the pace in car five. The Levi Garrett Chevrolet. There goes Alan Kowicki to the high side and around. You wonder if it's another flat tire or if it's some other mechanical problem. Looks like the right front tire's flat, man. The right front tire, there's something wrong with it. Boy, what a tough break for him. He fought his way back up there to what? He got back up to second, second position. Yep. And then something else goes wrong after having a flat tire earlier. So it appears as if the Unical halfway, rather the Unical bonus money, will not be paid today. Here's the face cam. Goes up to third gear. Doesn't look like he's very happy, though. Well, the right front tire didn't look flat that time, but that other... Morgan Shepard got the rear wheels off the track momentarily, but saved it. And he did that going into...
into second position. So Morgan Shepard now is in second behind Rudd. Here's Jeff Bodine in the pits. And he had just moved into second a moment ago. This certainly is an unscheduled pit stop. And Rudd is in also. Ricky Rudd is also in. Let's go to Jerry Punch. They were speculating that possibly a right front tire was planted. Either you were in the booth just moments ago, they will change right side tires. A tough break for the Levi Garrett Chevrolet driver, but again, on a road course, you do get a little bit of a break. You don't lose a lap here. Losing valuable time. Joey Knuckles is well in front of the car. He is off the jack and away. A tough break for Ricky Lowe. Now, fellas, I'm surprised they would not have changed all four tires. They can go the rest of the way from here, and uh, Rusty Wallace and many of those up front are going to have to stop. Why would you not go ahead and put on four tires? Well, that's a good question because uh, they're not going to get a lap change in four tires. I'm not sure I know the answer to that question, Nick. No, it just meant the loss of a few more seconds, but it could have uh, proved valuable in the later stages of the race. In any case, there is racing going on in turn number seven, and this is the battle for third position as Alan Kowicki and Sterling Marlin and Ernie Irvin are all right there together. It's also Ken Schrader, the white car. One of the skull cars, I don't know if that's Sir Pear or Terry Labonte. That's a couple of guys we haven't talked about too much today. Sterling Marlin and Alan Kowicki as we look back on them from Morgan Shepard's car. Morgan, of course, running in second position. Remember, Kowicki didn't have a real good race here last year, but he's having a terrific afternoon. To say he didn't have a good race last year is probably the classic understatement of all time. He had a horrible race here last time. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth position is Darrell Waltrip. Jerry Punch, who's with Waddell Wilson. Waddell, you opted to change two instead of four. Why? Well, the reason is we didn't need a full tank of gas. If we'd had to put in 21 gallons of fuel, then we'd have changed four. We need to burn a little gas, so we needed the time on the track. Plus, we have to make another stop also. So a lot of concern here. They're going to have to make one more stop because of the gas mileage here on this tough road course. Well, wow, that's a little bit of an... Oh, Tom Kendall with a lot of damage on the right front of that car. That's a tough break for Tommy, who was running so well. It happened at corner number four, and he's leaving debris all over the racetrack. Boy, he sure is. He'll be lucky to get that car back to the... Boy, oh, there's another car. Chad Looks Little. like Chad Little is off the pace right in front of him. I'm looking for a full course caution. Chad Little goes right down the drag strip, so he is not on the racetrack. But Kendall didn't do that. He's trying to make it back to the pit area by... I don't think Kendall race. knows how much damage is to the right front of that automobile. Man. Car owned by Mark Reno. There's a healthy good run. There's Chad Oh, and you can wow. see the damage on Little's car. Yes. So evidently those two cars got together somewhere along the way and did major damage on both. But there's no caution because Chad Little is not on the racetrack. He's on the drag strip. So, out of harm's way. His car is still able to move. Yeah. Well, he thought about the spot right here. He thought about it, it looks like. Oh, Earnhardt is back on the speedway. They changed the transmission, and Earnhardt. Oh, and look, all the gas coming out of the back of that car. Man, how would you like to be falling in, Ned? He's <laughs> really putting down some moisture on the speedway. Dale Earnhardt was in the pits for a long time, changing the transmission. Here's a look now at the incident. Here comes There's Tom Kendall, and boom! Yeah. yeah, I think the 19 car Chad Little had spun, and then Kendall ran into him once he came around that curve. He didn't see him. That's a blind yeah. curve. Had no place to go, and there was Chad Little right in the middle of the racetrack. Well, Kendall made it back to the garage here because there he is behind his pit, behind pit wall. The crew hastily trying to make repairs, but I'll be very surprised if we're able to fix the car. Yeah, and he's not running for points. This is uh, the only race he has run this year. 
so there wouldn't be the need as much as it would be if it was one of the guys who is running for the points. Let's take a look at the Western Auto Race recap. Rusty Wallace, the leader, has led 19 of the 47 laps at an average speed of 68.61 miles an hour. We've had five leaders and five lead changes, six caution periods, total of 15 laps, and 31 cars, a record right now on the lead lap. Those that have led include Ricky Rudd, Mike Chase, Ernie Urban, Rusty Wallace, and Tom Kendall. Those cars that have dropped out of competition include Herschel McGriff, Ted Kennedy, Dick Trickle, Rob Moroso. Now, the point standings and mechanic of the year, Robin Pemberton on top. He, of course, is the mechanic on the number six car of Mark Martin. Tim Brewer is in second, Jeff Bodine. Third is Gary Nelson, Kyle Petty. Tony Glover in fourth position. He works on the Ernie Urban crew. And Mike Bean on the uh, Bill Elliott car finds himself in fifth position in the Western Auto Mechanic of the Year competition. There's your leader, Rusty Wallace, but he'll have to stop at least one more time for pit stop. We'll be back right after this. Yeah. Morgan Shepard, Alan Kowicki, Sterling Marlin, and Ernie Irvin. Then Ken Schrader, Irv Hare, Daryl Waldrop, Mark Martin, and Troy Beebe. Those are your top 10 with 49 out of 74 laps completed. And some good battles on the racetrack. Again, we have 31 cars that are on the lead lap. There's the leader, Rusty Wallace. With a fairly comfortable advantage right now. Here comes Morgan Shepard in second position. Morgan is keeping him in sight. Mm -hmm. Here comes Alan Kowicki. There's Ernie Irvin. Sterling Marlin, Ken Schrader, then a good battle here involving Schrader and Mark Martin and Irv Hare and Daryl Waltrip. Waltrip is running in the eighth position. There's Mark Martin looking at his windshield. He's in ninth position. The sixth car of Mark Martin is moving up. Here he is. Now, wait a minute. He's trying to pass Schrader on the outside in this very, very tough corner. He might lose another spot if he's not careful trying to pass there. But he made the pass. Yep, he sure did. He has passed three cars in one lap. Mark Martin, the Folgers four, number six. Tell you what, if, these, if the 27 car of Rusty Wallace and the 6 car of Mark Martin get hooked up with equal tires on it, we might see a heck of a race, because it looks like the Martin's car is very, very good. Obviously, when he goes by, it's easy to say it's very good, right? <laughs> Ricky Rudd is going to be coming back in for another pit stop. Jerry Punch, here he comes. Unbelievable misfortune for our Colts and Ricky Rudd. They will come in this time and change all four tires. Apparently, he has another tire going down on the lead by Garrett Chevrolet out of the Hendrick Stable. Waddell Wilson and the crew now joined up with changing right side tires. They will clean the windshield. They've already taken the lug dust off the left side. They scamper around on the left side, spot the jack beneath it, and they will change left side tires. They had lost some time on the racetrack with that right side tire change before. He will lose some more time here. Still no danger of being left. Time, 24 second pit stop, he is away. Now he will be able to go the rest of the way from here, fellas, I think, as far as fuel is concerned, so he should be set with four new tires and a full tank of fuel. But what is a guy like Ricky Rudd thinking right now? It's a situation where you just can't seem to do anything right today. Well, that's right, he just can't believe the misfortune that he's had. Here he is now, as we watch from the foot cam. Just gently tapping the brake with the left foot at times, but then climbing on him on the right foot. Ricky Rudd, we ask him to describe your foot movement during a road race such as here at Sears Point. Well, it's going to probably look like a lot of dance work goes on. You know, you, you sort of learn how to do it naturally, but I, I guess a basic, uh, you know, call it heel toe down to you know, Basically, as you approach the corner, say you're 140 mile an hour, you're in fourth gear. Uh, you, you get off the accelerator, you stand on the brake. I use my heel on the brake. I rotate my right foot over to the top of the accelerator, bring the RPM up to about 3,500, 4,000 RPM, push the clutch in, go from fourth gear to neutral for a split second, then in the third gear. Then, as the time I'm easing the clutch out, the RPM uh, that I'm going to be turning in that gear will be matched. In other words, so there is no jerky motion in the car. These motors have so much compression that if you didn't match the RPM, 
uh, when you go to the next gear, it breaks the tires loose, and you'll see some of the guys start to wheel hop real bad uh, as they approach the corner. What's happened is they didn't match the RPM properly, and they uh, basically the rear axle locks up, and then they start skidding, and they'll skid right off the racetrack. So a lot of footwork that, that probably looks like it, that people at home will probably say, what in the world is going on there? But it's, it's, it's very much necessary to, to, to drive a road course like this. Now, the guys that are breaking with their left foot, they'll be do, doing something similar, but they'll take their right foot and bring the RPM up uh, and use their left foot for braking. But basically, you see a lot of footwork that you wouldn't see on oval track. Well, that's for sure. We're seeing a lot of it there, I'll tell you. Well, if you don't think that takes some coordination, yeah, uh, it really does. It, that's fantastic. Some people say these guys aren't athletes. Mark Martin doing battle with Ernie Urban. And the 98 car of Butch Miller is in the tires. I'd say he's sitting right on top of him. Yeah, that thing's not going to uh, pull itself out of there. Well, you can see his sponsor is lucky, and he certainly hasn't had a lucky afternoon today, as Butch Miller is atop the tires, and uh, we look for but do not see a full-course caution at the moment. The battle is for fourth position between Ernie Urban at number four and Mark Martin at number six. Mark looking to the inside in turn number four, and there will be, yes, a full-course caution coming out. That'll be our seventh of the afternoon. So these guys are racing now to the start-finish line where they will receive the yellow flag. And Mark Martin appears, backs off. And, of course, they'll be able to come in now. Everybody will and get enough fuel to go the rest of the way. That's exactly right, but some of them will not come in. Yep. And Mark Martin, we think, might be one of those that won't come in. Martin gesturing to the drivers behind him. They have seen the yellow flags displayed by the corner workers, and they know that a full course caution is out. So Martin looks at his rearview mirror on lap number 53. Yeah, he's keeping tabs on that guy behind him to be sure he's not going to come up there and try to pass him before they get back to the start finish line. Well, they slowed down to go by the spot that Butch Miller was up on the tires. Yeah, that was in turn number six. Here comes Rusty off of corner number 11. And he comes down and will take the yellow flag. And right behind him is going to be Morgan Shepard. And then comes Alan Kowicki. There's the yellow. So seven full course cautions have interrupted our performance here at the Banquet Frozen Foods 300. Shape for these grueling races that they compete in almost every weekend. Here comes the leader, Rusty Wallace, and several others in for what is probably going to be their final pit stop, and Jerry Punch is right there in Rusty's pit. And we'll see if some of this conditioning all the crews have been doing will pay off for Rusty Wallace and some of the other crews here as he brings his car, the Miller Genuine Draft Pontiac to a halt. It will make what will be, should be the final four-tire change, and they are going to put sticker tires on. Car number 15, a Morgan Shepard is in. The Budmore crew going to work on that car, trying to change tires. Now back here on Rusty Wallace's car, they change left side tires here on the car number 27. May car is through, putting the left side lug nuts on. Fuel being put in the car. He is off the jack. Great pit stop for Rusty Wallace. He is out of the way. Elliot is away. Shepard moving up through the gears, back on the racetrack. Now, fellas, this is going to put Ricky Rudd in good shape. All of these cars came into the pits. He was almost a lap down. He doesn't have to pit now. He has four relatively fresh tires and a full tank of fuel. That's going to put him back in good shape. <laughs> it's amazing how his, he was so frustrated just a, just a couple of laps ago, and here he is. Oh, what happened to Darrell? Darrell is stuck right at the start-finish line. Yep. what the deal is here. I guess he was coming out of the pits, and then all of a sudden it just wouldn't go no more. Huh. Darrell was running in the top ten. He was eighth before he came in for the pit stop. But that tight Chevrolet is stopped dead on the racetrack. The wrecker's coming to get him right now. He's, he's pulling up on his back bumper. We'll see it come into the picture there in just a moment. There he is. And Darrell just wants to push back. He says no. Oh, no, he's saying push. Come on. Yeah. Come on, let's go. We need to get get back to the pit. Hmm. You know, earlier in the race, ladies and gentlemen, we got a great speed shot set up for you right here in this straightaway between turn six and seven. Well, <laughs> it's got a little bit of dirt around it right now, so we're calling this our cave cam. <laughs> <laughs> 
There's a lot of debris on some portions of the racetrack and a lot of rubber build up, and we've got some dirt and other debris that's covering <laughs> our speed shot. I guess that's part of the price we pay when we put it real close to that's the track. Right. It was a great shot while it lasted, yeah. but uh, <laughs> unfortunately it didn't last long. Yeah, some of the glamour has been taken away. Well, under caution here at Sears Point, trying to get several cars off the racetrack, including that of Butch Miller, which ran up on the tires in turn number six. Back with more right after this. One Tough Motor Oil announces one tough guarantee. The Quaker State 250,000 mile or 10 year guarantee. Register your new car at a participating service center. Then use only Quaker State. Have oil and filter changed as directed at a service center. And if any lubricated engine part suffers an oil related breakdown within 250,000 miles or 10 years, you're covered. Quaker State guarantees it in writing. The big Q is one tough motor oil. $2.29 for a pot pie? There must be some mistake. And duck a la range. For my kids? <laughs> there must be some mistake. I said, where is the manager? He says he is. There must be some mistake. Today's banquet is for families like yours. Good food at the right price. And varieties the whole family will enjoy. I'm sticking with banquet. And that's no mistake. Today's banquet. Good food that's right on the money. The last time you got your film developed, how many saw this seal on the Boy International Raceway? Bobby Hillen is the leader of the race, followed by Jeff Bodine, Stan Barrett, Ricky Rudd, and Derek Cope. Six through ten, Rusty Wallace, Dale Jarrett, Michael Waltrip, Mark Martin, and Bill Elliott. And the yellow light atop the pace car remains on, so it'll be at least one more lap after this one before we go back to racing. This has certainly been the uh, longest caution period of the day. Well, the most consistent driver in Winston Cup competition, you're riding with him right now, Morgan Shepard. Second, or rather, the leader in points. Last week, taking over the points lead from Dale Earnhardt with an excellent performance at Dover. Morgan is at the top of his career after years of personal and professional struggle. Let's go behind the wall for a visit with Morgan Shepard. A new and positive attitude has overcome Morgan Shepard this season, and the results have been seen on the racetrack. But during his early years, a difficult childhood and wild time jeopardized any dreams Morgan had outside and inside of racing, and even though he had ended up in the winner's circle, it took a single event a few years ago to turn his life around, and at age 48 is finally reaching his potential on and off the track. I can remember it clearly, February the 23rd, uh, 1975. Uh, I was uh, living in Crestmont over here on Springs Road, and uh, that evening I fell down on my knees, and uh, I asked the good Lord for forgiveness, and I swear to goodness, I felt like when I got up, I could have jumped through the ceiling. That's how light I felt. And from that day on, I'm not saying that uh, life has, has been perfect for me, uh, but life sure has been better, because that was the turning point in my life. His perseverance through good and bad led to a partnership this year with Bud Moore and the Motorcraft team. A combination of strong-willed men that many wondered if it would survive. I'm just what you call a perfectionist about what I do. Well, sometimes a perfectionist, it's, uh, it's hard to get along with them because you seem to not to be able to do good enough for them, you know. And, uh, uh, that's kind of where, where I came from. Bud Moore is a little bit the same way. And before I came there, a lot of people think that I came in and made changes with Bud Moore. Bud Moore made the changes before I got there, before he knew that Morgan Shepard was coming on as a driver. He was building front steer cars. He was doing this and that, everything he could to try to get his team back on uh, top. Uh, Bud and I do think a lot alike, and uh, uh, we, I don't think we've had the first disagreement yet. And while the race team has come together, so has his family, Sanja and Shanda. We've been married going on six years now, and uh, things just keep getting better for us. And we've got a wonderful little girl uh, that'll be four years old, June the 25th, Shanda Renee. And uh, we're just blessed 
so much uh, when I'm away from them, testing or, or whatever. Uh, I can't wait to get back home uh, to them, you know. I miss them so much. However, Morgan still has one frustration. Early struggles caused him to stay out of school, and now he has a problem riding. I can remember one time at Hickory Speedway, uh, this little boy must have been about eight years old. He came up to me, and he wanted me to write something to him. And I told him, I'm sorry, I just signed autographs. And uh, he said, please write this to me. And, uh, and so he just kept insisting. And so finally, uh, it was embarrassing for me, you know. And I said, well, let me ask you this. Can you weld? Can you build an engine? And he said, no. Well, I said, I can't write. Constantly improving himself, Morgan has never given up and is ready to reap the benefits at an age he has it all in perspective to enjoy. You take a kid that's 20 years old and, and, and he's setting out to do something and if he thought that he had to wait till he was my age to get there, do you think that, uh, that he would have the determination or the willpower to last that long? But I was 33 years old when uh, I turned my faith to God, and uh, uh, I've never give up, and thank God I'm, I've got the job and all that I've got now. Good job, Ned. Good story there on Morgan Shepard, who is the current Winston Cup points leader, and he has obviously got his act together. Well, he really does have, and, and really he would be the first to tell you that the young people out there needs to get all of the education that they possibly can because it has been a hindrance to him. Sure. But he has certainly done well for himself. He really is a race driver. There is Morgan Shepard. Now let's take a look at his Big A Auto Parts pit stop performance. 23.3 on the driver, 25.4 on the crew, total 48.7. He went into the pit area in second position and he has come out in 12. And there, ladies and gentlemen, is what we've been talking about since the start of the program, track position. Track position. There's so many cars that stayed out in front of Morgan Shepard and Rusty Wallace. Here comes the green flag. Now, the car at the front of the field is Dale Earnhardt. He, however, is nine laps behind. Earnhardt is nine laps behind because of the fact he was into the pit area for a long time repairing a transmission. The leader of the race is Bobby Hillen, but man, look at the traffic jam behind him as cars thread their way through the second corner and try to gain valuable track position and spots. Jeff Bodine, the Budweiser Ford, trying desperately to get by. Now, Ricky Rudd trying to go on the inside of Bodine, can't make it. Meanwhile, Rusty Wallace sitting behind all these cars watching. Boy, you've got to be really patient at this point on the race, I would guess, because uh, you've got relatively few laps to go, but yet a lot of traffic to move through. You've got to be aggressively patient, because uh, you know, the, the chips are down now. They can go the rest of the way. You can't depend on pit stops, somebody stopping in front of you or something like that. You've got to earn what you get out there now. Here Rick. comes Rudd on the outside of Bodine. Remember this last year when Rudd was on the inside of Rusty Wallace. Is he going to be able to make the move? Yes, he did. Ricky Rudd goes to second position. Don't count him out. A big spin down in corner number seven. Whoa, lots of cars off the course, including Ernie Irvin and Alan Kowicki. The finger of fate has struck Alan Kowicki once again. And the number 18 car, Stan Barrett, is also off course, but he gets going again. Man, I tell you, I can't believe the luck that Alan Kowicki has at this race course. Unbelievable. come down now toward turn number 11 once again and here's for the lead yep ricky rudd is going to get the lead from bobby hill and i believe they go through turn number one side by side let's see what happens here ricky rudd gets the top spot from bobby hill rusty wallace has moved to third jeff bodine is fourth Look at Dale Jarrett up there in yes, fifth place. Dale Jarrett, a good run this afternoon in the Sitco Wood Brothers Ford. There's somebody else you don't think of as a road racer, but he has been up there in the top 10, 15 all afternoon, and now he's in the top five. Here's a replay of this melee down in turn seven. Boy, there are a lot of Hutt Strickland's involved. He had to just stop to keep him running over somebody. Ernie Irvin just made him a lap out there in the grass and came back on around. Bobby Hillen was also involved. The 44 car, that's a Sellers, Jack Sellers, also uh, off course momentarily. That's the second time this afternoon he has been off course. Here comes Rusty on the inside of Hillen. On the outside, I guess it is, trying to get by, and he makes the move. 
Rusty Wallace goes to second position, and now he sets his sights on the leader, Ricky Rudd. And so it may boil down to exactly what we had last year. <laughs> exactly. Just, just different colors on the race car. Yep. Same drivers involved, but different colors. And we was feeling sorry for Rudd because his chance to win the Unical Challenge was going away, but he's back again. There's Morgan Shepard pulling up on the back of Bill Elliott, trying to take that spot away. Get ahead of Bill is the sixth car driven by Mark Martin. A sixth spot. Jarrett working on Jeff Bodine. Jarrett pulling to the inside now, Jeff. Coming out of the final corner. Bobby Hill is smoking the tires on the Snickers Buick number eight. He's in third. Bobby Hill in his third. Dale Jarrett trying to make a move going into turn four. Ooh, he's he sideways. Ooh, but he survived. Now, now Mark Martin's Martin. the dirt. <laughs> well, when Jarrett came back out there, Mark was trying to make the pass, and uh, he just ran out of room. Looks like there was maybe some tire rub on the left front of that Mark Martin car. Morgan Shepard trying to take the position away from Elliott here. Meanwhile, is Rusty Wallace and Ricky Rudd, just like they were last year, with about four laps to go in the same corner. Rusty thinks twice about getting to the outside. Oh, oh and they trudge again. Oh, Rusty's tires are a little bit better than Rudd, so he's probably getting a little bit better traction, but yet he has to pass. Ned and I talked about at the top of the show just how difficult it is to pass. I believe Rusty may have the faster car, but Rudd is doing a terrific job keeping him back there. And Rusty's going to try to outbreak him right here, going into turn 11. Here they come into turn... Well, Rusty's going to pass him before they get there. Rusty Wallace is the new leader, and he cuts the rumble strips. Rudd may fight back on the inside, but nope, can't mount a challenge. And Rusty Wallace now has the lead once again. Already, Rusty put four or five car lengths on run, and meanwhile, those two cars driving away from a third place car of Bobby Hillen. These two guys have dominated road racing the last three years in Winston Cup competition. We ask Rudd, is there a friendly rivalry between you and Rusty when it comes to racing on the road courses? I think it's more of a probably a respect, I guess, because you know, a lot of these guys don't get around road courses that well. They do a good job, but they don't really maybe enjoy them as much as maybe myself, Rusty. Mark Martin, Terry Labonte, there's a lot of guys that run good, but I really enjoy them. I think Rusty probably has that respect to know that, that I'm going to be tough when we come out here, and I also respect him that he's going to be tough, and uh, it actually becomes fun, as a matter of fact. I mean, you're slipping and you're sliding and you're uh, grabbing gears, you're downshifting, and there's a lot of things that go on in the car, and actually when you get out there and you get two or three of your races, you almost forget about it at the Winston Cup race, and you forget about money on the line, and you're actually out there having a blast, really. Once again, Ricky Rudd and Rusty Wallace have come to the top. Now, here it is, the replay of the contact between Rusty and Ricky just moments ago. Almost exactly like last year, except Rusty got in the dirt. This time, he bumps Rudd. What? He gets in the right corner of that car and almost turned Rudd around. He sure did. And here now is how Rusty got the lead, heading into turn 11. He just drove deeper into the turn and outbranked him going into the turn, and Rudd knew he had him, so he backed off. He wasn't going to take any chance going there on the outside. 61 laps completed. We have 13 more to go. 13 laps remaining in the banquet Frozen Foods 300 with Rusty Wallace, the leader. And Irv Hare. We are under the caution, and it hasn't been such a lucky day for Troy Beebe in car number 93. He was involved with several other cars in an incident that we'll show you right now. Okay, we see Beebe coming into the picture, the yellow car. Kyle Penny and, and, and Bill Smith make some contact. Yeah. And Troy okay. Beebe comes along and hits Kyle Penny right in the right rear. And everybody else was able to move away except Troy Beebe. Well, our congratulations to James Kramer.
from Apollo, Pennsylvania. He is the proud owner of a new Pontiac Grand Prix SE. He was a winner in that right guard halfway challenge. Now, he says that his secret to winning today is entering the contest during the week while the lines aren't busy. And certainly you can do that too. It doesn't make a difference when you enter as long as you do get entered for the right guard halfway challenge. However, congratulations to James Kramer from Apollo, Pennsylvania, winner of the right guard halfway challenge and a Pontiac Grand Prix. I guess he knew Rusty Wallace was going to be a pretty good bet for the leader at the halfway point. <laughs> yep. Not a bad choice. Or maybe he called and said Rusty on Tuesday and Rudd on Wednesday. And no, actually, you don't have to say who it is. You just have to register and oh, see when they oh, call you right. back. Yeah. That's, it used to be you had to guess who it was going yeah. to be, but now that's right. Now you just, uh, you just register and wait for the phone to ring. Gee, guys, what are we going to do for the next three weeks? We don't have any Winston Cup racing now until the Pepsi Firecracker 400 on July 7th. What are you going to do? I'm going to see some wonderful Winston Cup stock car racing in Pocono, Michigan. Well, good for you. I might <laughs> check out one or two of those myself. And here is uh, the details on the Pepsi 400 from Daytona at 10 o'clock in the morning, July 7th. Boy. Do you remember last year? It was the first time that we had that uh, this race had been uh, done on a uh, delayed basis the same day, and we had an absolutely incredible race. And remember, now they're using the uh, the uh, smaller restrictor plates for this event, aren't they? And this this year it will be live. Don't forget to get up at 10 o'clock in the morning on Saturday morning, July 7th for the Pepsi 400. And you folks in California, don't forget to get up at 7 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you can have a breakfast around the uh, television and watch the Pepsi 400 from but Daytona International Speedway. But you know those people that made that wonderful sign for us will get up at 7 o'clock in the morning. You better they believe wouldn't it. miss it. <laughs> and we thanks for the hospitality. Let's go to Jerry Punch, who's with our mechanic of the race. And the no surprise, the mechanic of the race today is Waddell Wilson. And Waddell, you guys put a brand new car together, came out here and tested, and it's paid off so far. Well, you know, I appreciate Rick letting me come out here and test with uh, Ricky, and it's paid off. I knew if we'd come and test it and didn't come and sit on the pole and run good, it was all in vain because it's expensive testing out here. But, you know, the cars run well, and Rick has been happy with it. You know, I'd love to be able to beat Rusty, but boy, is he tough. You've had a couple of flat tires, but you've made the right call and kept him in the race. Well, you know, it, it's hard sometimes to make the right calls in pits because when they come on the radio, they're hollering what to do, and, and, you know, it's just a gut feel what you go with a lot of times, and sometimes you're wrong, though. But I, I appreciate Western Auto and all their uh, help to us and uh, their backing and everything. Waddell Wilson, mechanic of the race, the crew chief here for Ricky Rudd, and it's not over yet, fellas. There's still a few laps to go. And Ricky Rudd is in second position, but he and the rest of the field is under caution because of an incident. Let's take a look now at the top five in Winston Cup points and where they're running. Morgan Shepard, the leader in Winston Cup points, is seventh in this race. Mark Martin is fifth. Dale Earnhardt, because of a bulky transmission, is 34th. Rusty Wallace is the leader of the race, and Jeff Bodine is in fourth spot. So Rusty, or rather Dale Earnhardt, is going to lose more Winston Cup points, but again, getting the transmission fixed and back out there will gain him some valuable points. Under caution because of an incident in turn number three, it involved the number 93 car of Troy Beebe, not 83 as I said, and here's how it happened. 73, Schmitz Bunn, then Kyle Petty became involved, and boom, Troy Beebe hit Kyle Petty. Boy, they left, they took all the options out for Troy except the dirt. <laughs> So that's the reason that we are still under caution, and the lights on the pace car remain flickering, so uh, it'll be at least one more lap before we go back to green flag competition. With now less than 10 laps to go in this race. Here's Michael Waltrip, who is shown in 12th position. And the rest of the field, we have 23 cars that are on the lead lap. That's one over the record set at Watkins Glen in August of 1988. Bob, why don't we give the fans a rundown on who is where. Chris Rusty Wallace leading, Ricky Rudd is second, Bobby Hillen third, Jeff Bodine fourth, Mark Martin fifth, Dale Jarrett sixth, Morgan Shepard seventh, Sterling Marlin eighth, ninth is Herb Hare, Kenny Schrader is tenth, in eleventh place is Derek Cope, twelfth, Michael Waltrip, thirteenth, Rick Wilson, fourteenth, Harry Gant, fifteenth, Hutt Strickland, fifth, sixteenth, is Ernie Irvin, seventeenth, Alan Kowicki, eighteenth, Bill Smith, nineteenth, is the car number ninety-nine of 
was one of the West Coast drivers, and that's John Krebs having a great run here today. Bill Elliott is in 20th place. 21st, Stan Berry. 22nd is Kyle Petty. And in 23rd place, the last car on the lead lap, the car 09 of Terry Fisher. And there the car streamed through your picture frame. Now we showed you that we read to you rather the cars that are on the lead lap, but that does not reflect all of the cars that are still out there in competition. There comes Bill Elliott. And we saw Dave Marcus go through. He is not on the lead lap, but still out there. Richard Petty still out there, but he also is not on the lead lap. Stan Barrett. There's Earnhardt. There's Dave Allison. Allison. Yeah, he's not on the lead lap. Look at this. Spencer. That's Butch Miller. His car was on top of the tires not too long ago. He's back on the course, minus the minus the front bumper. Yeah, I was talking to Darrell Walker before the race started today, and he said, you've got to finish this race because 44 cars are starting. If you finish last and get points for 44 spot, cancel Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Still under caution at Sears Point International Raceway. We'll take another break and be right back with more of our live Winston Cup racing on this Sunday afternoon. Catch up on all the day's activities in the world of sports. Baseball tonight follows that. And then our Sunday night baseball game live at 8 o'clock Eastern time tonight features the Toronto Blue Jays against the Milwaukee Brewers. Sunday night baseball live tonight on ESPN at 8 o'clock, the Blue Jays and the Brewers. Let's go to Jerry Punch down on Pit Road. People say we're not technical enough sometimes when we talk about racing, but I'm going to show you something that may be the unsung hero in the NASCAR Winston Cup cars. You hear them talk about tires and spray. Listen to the shock absorber, the Bill Stein shocks they used around the circuit. 1984, Bill Elliott was the first driver to win with his shock at Michigan, and since that time, over 150 drivers have won with this gas shock absorber. The old double tube shocks had this hydraulic fluid inside. The problem with the old double tube shocks was that the shock itself would begin to foam or cavitate and lose its resistance. Now with the gas inside, you can put this shock back and forth and you don't get any foaming at all. But if I take the gas out, as I will do here quickly, and then I begin to move the piston up inside and remove the remainder of this gas here inside the shock absorber. You will see it will begin to foam inside and that's called cavitation. The shock would give up if it didn't have the gas inside. That's why the Bill Stein shocks with the gas inside, the gas shock absorbers, so critical to a Winston Cup crew anywhere, and particularly here at a road course. We go back to racing on lap number 66. Here's Jeff Bodine trying to take over third position from Bobby Hillen as they fight for the position in turn number three. This is where the incident occurred just a few laps ago. Kyle Petty spun right near the exit of the pit area, near the uh, start-finish line. And so Kyle Petty, who is running in 22nd position, loses a couple of more spots. Actually, he could only lose one more because there are 23 cars in the lead lap, so it cost him a lot of time on the track. Here comes the field up through corner number five. Boy, is this a replay of last year or what? With Wallace and Rudd running first and second. But the things are flip-flop. Last year it was Ricky Rudd. This year it's Rusty Wallace leading. Inside Morgan Shepard's car as he follows Mark Martin. Shepard got by Dale Jarrett on the start of the race, on the restart. Oh, look at Mark Martin trying to go on the outside of Bobby Hillen. Let's see, coming off this corner. Remember last year, he ran out of room. Oh, and Martin makes it get... So he does pick up the spot on Bobby Hill, and here is Kyle Petty spin. Well, he had some help. Oh, yeah. And uh, spins just right out of that group of cars. It's a good place to spin if there is, yeah. such a good, is such a thing. Had lots of room there. Didn't hit anything. Right at the start finish line, and all the other cars were on the outside of the track, headed for turn number one. Rusty Wallace lights up the tires, braking, going into corner number 11, coming Ooh. out. Rusty just in. about drove the car into the pit wall there, coming off turn 11. 67 laps completed. We've got seven to go. Seven more laps to go. Rusty Wallace leading Ricky Rudd. Now, during that caution, fellas, both of them tires had an opportunity to cool a little bit. Rusty had on the best tires, or at least he has changed since Rudd has, but maybe that cooling off period there made them pretty equal. There's Ernie Urban, who uh, is right ahead of Michael Waldrop. He was outside on the front row when this race began. As a matter of fact, led at one point. Now finds himself back in, uh, make that 10th 
position. Urban 10th, and Michael Waltrip is 11th. And one of the drivers that was up there, Kenny Schrader, had just made a pit stop. He was one of the, he still is on the lead lap, but he just made a pit stop. Here's a good battle. Mark Martin going to the outside of Jeff Bodine, looking for third spot. Martin and Jeff Bodine, wheel to wheel, side by side, and there is exactly what happened to Ronan Wallace last year. Yep. Jeff just Martin. took him as far as he could and got him off course just a little. Yep, and uh, Martin just ran out of the Now here comes Morgan Shepard, who appears to be on his way to maintaining that tremendous streak he has going in Winston Cup competition this year, finishing in the top ten every single race. He's currently fifth. Looking back from Mark Martin out the back glass to Morgan Shepard. And back behind these, Sterling Marlin hit Dale Jarrett and spun him out. Yeah. Down there coming out of turn 11. Now Jarrett gets going again, but he lost a lot of positions. That's a tough break for Dale Jarrett, who's finishing position here this afternoon. Unless he can regain those spots, will not in any way reflect his excellent performance. Morgan Shepard will riding with him as he pursues Mark Martin and Jeff Bodine. Looking back at Morgan now from Mark Martin's car. Morgan's car wiggling a little bit as he accelerates off the corner. It closes up right on the back bumper of Mark. And Mark Martin is just eating the back bumper of the Jeff Bodine car up. He sure is. Oh, Martin tried to go inside and got the left side wheels off the track just a little bit at corner number nine. He'll probably try it again up in turn seven this time. Three of left. That's Mark Martin does pass. Jeff Bodine in the S's. That's normally where you don't see passing, but we did right there. That is unbelievable. What a pass that Mark Martin made. And, and let's give credit to Jeff Bodine for giving him some room to get by. Yep, it was a good, clean battle. But, uh, Jeff Bodine was very sportsmanlike. Now Morgan Shepard will begin knocking on Jeff's door. And he drives up on the outside of turn 11. I know that's not going to work too good. 69 laps completed, six more to go. I thought it was 75. Right. You're right, five to go. Oh, your mathematics leaves something to be desired. Still here. can't subtract, can I? <laughs> now, Jeff Bodine got his rear bumper full of Morgan Shepard. Battle for fourth position right here between Jeff Bodine and number 11 and Morgan Shepard in 15. They head for turn four. Morgan will go to the outside. Come on now. Down the hill. Again, some paint being traded just like we see at North Wilkesboro and Martinsville on the short track. And Morgan Shepard has really got the tires lit up. Morgan has to be careful because he is the Winston Cup point leader. If he falls out of the race now or should get off the course, he's going to finish the last. Now, here he goes on the outside up in turn seven. But on the other hand, you battle for any position you can get because each position just gives you that many more points, and who knows? It could be enough to either win or lose the championship. 33 car Harry Gant is off course with the nose and the tires. He's trying to back it up, but it doesn't seem to be doing very much. Looks like he's home there. Will this bring out a full course caution? NASCAR will throw the caution flag at this late stage of the race, but we'll see. We'll only have four more laps to go when they come by. Harry Gann was running in 15th position with a car went into the tire wall. Still watching this battle for fourth. Bodine, Shepard. There's the leader, Rusty Wallace, in second place, Ricky Rudd, and third place, Mark Martin. Fourth and fifth, Bodine and Shepard, and then sixth is Bobby Hiller. Seventh is Marlin. Eighth is Ernie Irvin. Ninth is Irv Hare. And tenth is Michael Waltrip. Less than four laps to go here at Sears Point. Morgan 
Shepard is having no luck taking that fourth position away from Jeff Bodine. Now Morgan's going to try to get inside Jeff at the exit turn six. And get on the outside of the turn seven. position between Ricky Rudd and uh, Mark Martin. Yes, sir. Mark Martin has caught Ricky Rudd. Ooh, look at him. Yeah. Right front come off the ground. And Martin may try to outbreak Rudd going yep. to turn 11. Here they go through corner number 10. Setting up for this straightaway. And now they'll begin breaking for tor corner number 11. Let's see what Mark Martin does. He wanted to go to the outside, it looks like. Maybe he's trying to set him up coming out of the corner. He's trying to get a wide angle to get off turn 11. Nope. Sliding off the corner like they do in Push Morgan Shepard. He's in the pits. Morgan Shepard, our Winston Cup point leader, went behind the wall, ladies and gentlemen. Unbelievable. With and just... into the garage area, fellas. He's coming all the way into the garage area. I believe there was some smoke coming from the motorcraft Ford. Wow. Unbelievable. Morgan Shepard, who was running in fifth position, the Winston Cup points leader, suddenly comes off the course and goes behind the wall. Mark Martin is trying to get second position right here, and he does it momentarily. Yes, he's got it. Ricky Rudd goes to third. Now the question becomes, can Mark Martin close in on Rusty Wallace and make it a battle for the lead? Rusty has a pretty sizable advantage right now, and we don't have that much more time to go, and we understand the motor gave up on the motor craft board. Wow, a tough break for Morgan Shepard. It's going to be interesting to see how the points shake out because look who is in second position right now, Mark Martin, who was second in the points when we came into this event. What, what a tough break for Morgan Shepard. As you said just a moment ago, he has finished in the top ten every race. And that streak is going to be broken. Here's the leader, Rusty Wallace, and there's the advantage he has on Mark Martin. Mark is just trying everything he can to close in and make it a battle for the league. As I said earlier, I think if Mark Martin and Rusty Wallace could get hooked up with equal tires, it would be a great race. They're evenly matched today. Two more laps to go for Rusty Wallace. This completes the 72nd circuit. competition. We'll have to calculate that, but Morgan Shepard is behind the wall, and of course, Dale Earnhardt spent many, many laps behind the wall, repairing a transmission. And there's trouble down in turn 11. Davey Allison and, and the Terry Labonte car are nose to nose. I believe that could be, is that Labonte or, yeah, that is Labonte. Yeah, uh, Davey Allison spun, and Terry came into the turn, just couldn't get stopped, and, and hit Davey now. They both get going, or at least the Davis get going. The car number one, and Terry Labonte is still sitting there. Labonte remains in the middle of the racetrack in turn number 11. And you know he does not want to be there. He is right in the middle of things. Here it is once again. Davey Allison just loses oh, yeah. control going in. Oh, a full course caution. This may mean the race will end under caution. And there's a contact between Terry Labonte and Davey Allison. Rusty Wallace is headed toward the yellow flag because of Terry Labonte's stop car in corner number 11. We could see this race end under caution. And boy, will we see some scrambling when they get down there to that car sitting there and they're rotting the groove in turn 11. That's a tough enough track when it's clear. Of course, most of the spotters have told their drivers that's where the trouble is, so be careful when you get there. Rusty picking his way through. Mark Martin. Here he comes. Right up on the back bumper of him. Yellow flag is showing. Mark is trying to win the race to the line because that could be the end of the race right there. The white and the yellow flag comes out simultaneously. This race will end under caution, and Rusty Wallace will win it. Well, a kind of a... Uh, 
climactic ending here to what was otherwise an exciting afternoon of racing, but it is, for all intents and purposes, over. As the cars now are under caution and cannot pass, and next time around, the checkered flag will wave for Rusty. Well, Rusty, uh, he knows he's under the caution flag, but he's not slowing down. You know, <laughs> he's not going to let Mark Martin pass him. I don't care what. Now, just for the heck of it, he's, he's going to stay ahead of Mark. But we are under our ninth full course caution of the day. Terry Labonte's car is still in the middle of the racetrack in corner number 11 as the lead duo makes their way through turn number six onto the drag strip. Rusty Wallace will win this event. I guess the only way he couldn't win is if a car stops and stalls on him between now and the finish line. Yeah, you because know, Mark Martin can't pass him. There are yep. under caution flag conditions, and so he can't pass him. All Rusty has to do is keep the car running to the start-finish line, and he'll have his second win of 1990, and that's going to certainly increase his chances of successfully defending the Winston Cup Championship. Well, he got a break today because the point leader, Morgan Shepard, had a problem. He's going to have a, a bad finish and lose some valuable Winston Cup points. Bill Elliott, the Coors Ford, blew an engine just a moment ago as he crossed under the white flag. I don't know if he'll be able to make it back or not. Rusty is in turn number 10. And the pace car has picked the pace car picks the cars up uh, in the S's between turns eight and nine. And that's where the pace car has come onto the racetrack as they head now for turn number eleven. You can see Terry Lamonti's car up ahead. That has caused our final caution period of the afternoon and has caused the race to end under yellow. This will be Rusty Wallace's 18th Winston career win and it will mean that he continues to dominate road racing in Winston Cup competition having now won five races out of the last seven here comes the pace car Ricky Rush says, I bet I can beat those guys to the line <laughs> <laughs> Rusty Wallace wins the banquet frozen foods 300 under caution Rusty Wallace from Fenton Missouri adds another win to his resume on the road course, Mark Martin finishes second, Ricky Rudd third, fourth would be Terry Le or rather uh, Jeff Bodine in number 11, and the number eight car of Bobby Hillen finishes in fifth position. Let's go to the pits very quickly. Well, Barry Dodson, another great effort today, another great effort by the crew today and the driver. Crew did a good job. We had a uh, very good pit stop. It's tough out here. It's a tight pit road, but it's something... Uh, kind of unusual for us it was a picture perfect day you know it seems like something always happens i just told him i said if you make it back here you know under the caution this will be the easiest one we ever won uh, we just need to thank miller genuine draft mobile one ac spark plugs uh, bill stein shocks had a lot to do with it and uh, a lot of people just a very good effort for us oh glenda comes through this car you built back in 86. yeah it's a good car and uh with it is that he's taken care of it and we've been able to go back to racetrack with data back in the car up. Barry Dotson, the winning crew chief here as Rusty Wallace wins the Banquet Frozen Foods 300. And the car is relatively unscathed compared to many that competed here this afternoon. Rusty Wallace with his hand high in the air wins the race, finishing second. There he is, Mark Martin. He's talking with the crew and third position goes to Ricky Rudd. So a great race has come to an end here this afternoon with Rusty Wallace winning again. I don't uh, Earlier today when you saw the grandstands, which aren't really all that filled up, but this is where the crowd is on a race course. They position themselves around the course to get their best vantage point, and there were just a tremendous number of people here today. I think last year they had about 50, 60,000 people here, which was the largest crowd that this racetrack Sears Point has ever had, and I would estimate that the crowd is bigger this year than last. Those people up on the hill, up and around uh, turn seven, where Benny and I did our, our opening this morning, you can see a lot of the racetrack from yeah. up there. This is one of the best uh, racetracks for, for vantage points. I stood yesterday during the Southwest Tour race uh, between turns eight and nine, and just a, a lot of uh, area that you can see there. You can see Rusty Wallace as he has moved into victory lane now. And emerging from the car with the... Uh, a lot of applause, and let's go down to our Road Handler Winner's Circle interview and Jerry Punch. Well, Rusty has climbed up. Rusty number two for the year. Great effort today. Well, thank you very much. It was a great run. The car ran super all day long. 
Uh, I really let the crew down qualifying by getting off the track a little bit, but I tried to make it up to him today. And uh, they did an outstanding job in pit stops. And I'd just like to thank Miller Genuine Draft, Mobile One, AC Spark Plugs, and Pontiac, and all our sponsors. And the second win of the year really feels great, Jerry. The car was consistent all afternoon. Ricky looked pretty strong, but his car went away a little bit late to race. Yeah, well, Ricky was real strong beginning of the race, and then they got in that accident early. And uh, when Dale and the rest of them got into it, and uh, I don't know if it wasn't for that wreck, he might have did pretty good. But uh, I'm real happy about my Pontiac. It did a good job today. Rusty Wallace winning his fifth road course of his career, tying him with Richard Petty as the most road course wins for active drivers in NASCAR. Bob? And thank you very much, Jerry. We'll be back with more post-race activity here at Sears Point. We'll check out the uh, point standings as they are right now in Winston, Car Sonoma, California, where Rusty Wallace has won the Banquet Frozen Foods 300 Winston Cup race. Our Speed World coverage being brought to you by Quaker. Leader, however, he isn't anymore. Let's go to Morgan Shepard, John Kernan with him. Well, Bob Morgan says he doesn't really care about the points right now, do you, Morgan? Well, you know, I just hate it. The Motorcraft Thunderbird uh, fell out of the race. Uh, you know, we, we hit, was, was consistent, keeping some good consistent runs, and uh, uh, I'm trying to keep the points off my mind. What about the uh, string of top ten finishes? That comes to an end also. Yeah, you know, I really hated to see that come to the end because uh, uh, we had that going for us, and uh, uh, I was hoping that we could ease up on a win here before long. And the Motocraft Thunderbird ran good today. Uh, we was running second there before that next to last caution came out, and uh, we had uh, air rinks mess up in the pits and uh, got me way behind, but uh, uh, the Motocraft Thunderbird ran good all day long. Well, thank you, Morgan, and according to our calculations, now second in points, the new points leader is standing by with our Jerry Punch. Indeed, Mark Martin is the new points leader for the Winston Cup Series, and Mark, first of all, congratulations on a great effort today. It got a little physical out there. That was pretty rough out there today, uh, but I had such a good car, I could usually get the best end of it, so that was that was really fun today. Uh, if your car's off a little bit, uh, usually you lose out on the physical, physical end, but it, it was good. I just want to thank Jack Roush and Folgers, Valvoline, and, and Mike, my crew they put a race car under me that could have won the race we just didn't do it uh, due to circumstances uh, we got in that uh, accident Th all three of us had flat tires early in the race and ran into each other and i bent my toe in out and uh, toe out doesn't hurt the car too bad on road courses so we were real lucky with that the points lead how about that well how about that <laughs> we've got a long way to go but uh, we've got a great team and we've got a great shot Indeed they do. Keep your eye. This young man will be a force to be reckoned with throughout the remainder of the year. Bob? All right. Mark Martin, who finishes second here this afternoon, but is the new leader of Winston Cup points. And we'll be back to check the top 20 and more when we return to Sears Point International Raceway. Rusty Wallace is the winner. Mark Martin finished second. Then Ricky Rudd, Jeff Bodine, and Bobby Hillen. Finishing six was Sterling Marlin, then Ernie Irvin, Irv Hare, Michael Waltrip, and Rick Wilson. Alan Kowicki finished 11th, then Hutt Strickland, Derry Cope, Dale Jarrett, and Terry Fisher. And 16 through 20, Kyle Petty, Stan Barrett, Ken Schrader, Harry Gant, and Bill Schmidt. Let's go to John Kernan, who's with Ricky Rudd. Well, Ricky, a third place finish, not too bad, but I know you would have really liked to have come home first here again. Well, I tell you, we didn't, we didn't have a choice today. Third, uh, normally you wouldn't settle for that, but the kind of day we had today... I know we had at least uh, probably four unscheduled stops, four unscheduled flat tire stops, and really the crew was the one that kept us up in there without losing a lap. I know a couple of times we, we had two flats on a, before the uh, caution came out, so we, we came from dead last back up to third, and we didn't really have, couldn't run the kind of race we wanted to. It was dictated by the tire situation, the flat tires, and at the end of the race, we simply ended up on old tires, and Rusty and Martin, the rest of them had new tires, and I was going to try to hold them off the best I could, but, I, you know, we gave it all we had. But, uh, like I say, the tire situation dictated our race. Just didn't have anything there left at the end to, to make a charge at all. It was just all the tires, just the old tires. Well, the biggest thing, I was sitting on tires that had about 10, 12 laps on them. Rusty had brand-new sticker tires, and, you know, you're talking about almost two seconds a lap difference in the speed in the tires. But uh, the way the caution situation worked out, had I pitted, I'd have, had to, I'd have been coming back from about 20th place. There's no way I could have drove up through the field with that short of uh, laps remaining. So, again, we didn't, like I say, we didn't really have a uh, choice on the situation. And, you know, we're going to try to race, and hopefully Rusty was going to get caught up in traffic. But, like I say, we didn't didn't have much for him. We'd like to come in and get some four new tires. I believe we had something for him. 
Ricky Rudd, the pole sitter, finishing third, and not a bad finish at all. And Jerry Punch is with Jeff Bodine. Well, Jeff back here trying to quickly get changed. Jeff, a great effort today from 26 to 4. Good run. It was a great, uh, great effort. And, you know, I don't normally say these things on the radio. I'm a pretty mild kind of guy, but I've got a hell of a picture. They gained about 10 spots on the first caution when we came in and put me up front, and the car ran pretty good. It wasn't dialed in perfect like Rusty was, but it ran really good. And we had a flat tire, and all our strategy, all that hard work kind of went out the window, and we thought, well, what are we going to do now? Well, we had enough gas to go the distance. Those other guys stopped on that one caution. We stayed out, got track position. You know, I tried to hold Mark off. We had a heck of a race out there. I couldn't do that. But I got by Bobby Hillen, and we ended up with a, a good fourth-place finish. We were out there on used tires, and uh, the car went pretty good on used tires. I'm just proud of this team. It, we are finally finished the race without any serious problems. Uh, we got things back on track now. Indeed they do. Jeff Bodine finishing fourth. And there you have interviews with the top four finishers, plus Morgan Shepard, who dropped out of competition late in the afternoon. Back with more after this.